Hey everyone, welcome to Type Talks. Today we have ISFPs versus INFPs. And so Kurt, would you like to tell us a bit about you? <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing already. Hi, my name is Kurt and um, I'm ISFP, as you can see <laughs> my name. Um, I can't think of anything interesting to say about myself right now, so. For sure. And Jamila? Yeah, I'm Jamila. Um, I'm an ISFP and um, I'm also Enneagram 4, so preservation. Wing 5. Yeah. Awesome. And Sheila? Hi, I'm Sheila. I'm also an ISFP and, and I am um, an Enneagram 4 Wing 3. And Christian? Uh, my name is Christian. I'm an INFP, and I'm an Enneagram Four Wing Five Self Prez. Cool. And Paul, number one. <laughs> Hi everyone. Uh, I'm Paul, number one. Apparently, uh, I'm an INFP, and I'm also a Enneagram Nine Wing One uh, Sexual. Excellent. And Paul, number two. I wasn't sure if I was going to be called Paul number two or the ugly Paul or some variant of that. Um, like Kurt, I couldn't think of much to say until everyone else started seeing their Enneagram types. Mine is one wing two. Um, got a better, better Hulk syndrome. Uh, <clears throat> and I'm generally Joyce's antithesis and enjoy every moment of it. Yeah. And Paul, number two, wants to start a life coaching business soon. So I'll link that below when that's started. And Erica? Hi, I'm Erica. Um, and I am an INFP and I'm a nine wing eight in the sexual one. <laughs> so I always feel awkward saying that it to other people, but I'll just say it. My own. Um, so yeah, that's me. Yeah, it's always weird to tell other people you're you're sexual, <laughs> like because it, it, it's out of context and, it's, and people don't know what you're saying. But yeah, no, that's awesome, Erica. Lo lovely intros. I'll have everyone's links down below, and let's get this party started. And so, my first topic of discussion for you all is the difference between F I S E for ISFPs versus F I S I for INFPs, and your relationship with your emotions and your body. Like, do you feel your emotions in your body or do you feel your emotions through your body? Like, how would you describe your experience of your emotions with your physical form? Um, I guess I'll go first. Um, I feel my emotions, um, I guess, in my body um, in sort of um, maybe specific places. Um, but I, I don't know if I feel them. Um, through my body. So um, that's, um, I, I imagine maybe ISFPs feel it through their body, but uh, that's that's um, not my experience. So for me, I would say that um, I don't ever really feel my emotions in my body. Um, unless I'm like really nervous or like really, 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 really upset, which sometimes will take me a while to get there. Um, but it's interesting that you distinguished in versus through. I think like as a singer, when I'm performing, then that's when I feel, I guess, the weight of my emotions almost deeper and more complex and stronger than any other time. And it's kind of like whatever I'm feeling, whatever I'm singing about, it's kind of like channeling through my body out into the crowd that I'm singing to um, in order to, you know, kind of give them whatever feeling I want them to feel, whether it's anger or sadness or happiness or, you know, fill in the blank. I I feel that in all different ways. Um, I would say that I, I have um, a really strong, like re my body will have strong reactions, like really strong reactions to things. And then I sometimes have to make sense of them um, 
by working it out by like exploring it. So like I'll feel something and just it's deep, intense it, it part of me. It's it's very for mu very much a bodily reaction. Like I've even had experiences where um, I'm feeling sad and my arms start aching, kind of thing. So things like that. Um, but I rash I can rationalize what that experience is quite well now as I'm getting older. Um, I'm able to point that out that this is like, oh, when I feel this, I feel ashamed. I feel unhappy. I, I feel sad. I feel, you know, so that's my experience. Uh, for me, I feel like I definitely experience my emotions in my body. I feel very sensitive to particularly, particularly like the, my gut area. I don't know why I feel a lot in that area. Um, and in a way it's kind of like that might be the first thing that I feel as far as like that alerts me that something is going on inside and then I'll like pay attention to that and I'll figure out what it is that I'm feeling. Um, I think if, if, I'm not entirely sure what you mean by like feeling through the body, um, <clears throat> but I would say that depending on the emotion that I'm feeling, I might be compelled to express it somehow with my body, like maybe through dance. I'm like not a dancer at all, but <laughs> um, there are certain times when like, I guess, especially if there's music that um, I feel like my, the best way I can describe it is that my emotion is like compelling me to like express it somehow with movement. I would like to second that what Kirk said. I, I definitely express my emotions through dancing too. Whether I'm already on the stage singing or like Denzel, my husband always laughs at me because if we're watching the show and it's just like a transition between a scene and music comes on and that two second like clip, I'm just gonna start dancing because I just feel it. And, or like if I'm eating, Food makes me excited. And so I just start dancing because I'm like eating food because that makes me feel good. So I definitely express a lot. And I also second with, through dancing, and I also second what you said about like feeling things in your gut. That's probably for me how I feel too. Like I said, when I'm nervous or like if I'm really upset. And then also if I'm really upset, I start shaking and I want to like hit something, not someone. <laughs> Are are you trying to make a distinction between like a like a a, a cerebral feeling um, versus like a feeling that is expressed through some sort of like physical movement, Joyce? Good question, Christian. And so, thank you. Shout out to Sino Christian for asking this question, for asking asking me to ask this question. And so, I think what he meant was like feeling it like in your body, as in like a a static maybe state or maybe like feeling through the body like through um, motion like your motion mm. like your motion through motion or your, or your motion through memory like and and does that make sense mm. yeah is this is also i wondered is it also maybe a question where how do we express it how do we deal with it is that yes or just how we feel it oh okay um that's interesting. That's a really good question. I was thinking about that. I find more so with anything negative, uh, I'll really feel it centered, like right in my gut. You know, it's like almost a cliche to say, that, yeah, just that gut feeling, you know, where, you know, you feel, feel that kind of sinking feeling. Uh, but then I will notice from time to time that you know, I'll get these like, yeah, when I have these extreme emotions, actually, they'll actually like suddenly jump into my extremities. Like I really feel things in my, <laughs> in the palms of my hands and uh, in my feet for some reason. I don't do anything about it. <laughs> I just like kind of sit there and let it happen. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's quite interesting. I've noticed a, a difference between uh, myself and my my identical twin brother, actually, I, I, he's an SE user. I think he's ESFP or ESTP, and he is a very kinetic person. Uh, he's a he's a drummer. He's like basically the animal from the Muppets, you know, uh, personified. He's 
he expresses it very physically. He is very dynamic to the point where when I'm interacting with him, it can be very overwhelming. Um, I've noticed when I'm experiencing a strong emotion, it will take over, it'll consume, but I don't feel it moving outwards. I feel like it's sort of growing inside, kind of like shaking a fizzy bottle and the pressure just kind of builds. Um, <clears throat> you know, when I'm listening to, to, to music that has a real emotional center, I feel my body almost get tingling, and kind of numb. And I'm not trying to interpret what that feeling is, but it just kind of goes throughout completely. Um, and, you know, it, it feels, yeah, it just feels like holding it in. Now that might be more of a masculinity thing than an SI thing, but that, that's, yeah, that's my experience is it sort of takes over. It's hard to release it. I don't feel moved to, uh, to, to express my emotions physically. I feel almost like, it's still within. And so artistic mediums like writing and music, I think help to provide a bit of catharsis, a bit of a realization of what that emotion is. So when I'm playing a music, when I'm playing, if I'm playing guitar, playing piano, um, I'm able to, to play what I'm feeling to better know what it is, you know? But it's, st it's still an internal thing. That sensation is still internal. And I find if I'm overcome with emotion, if I'm anxious or if I'm excited, I'll be walking around and my legs will actually just like crumble under me. Um, sort of like I lose that attachment to my body. I, my body kind of becomes inert. And I'm not able to express that. So that's where I'm starting to see the, the SE and the SI where they could diverge. Um, at least, you know, theoretically that the SI kind of, contains it internal mm -hmm. uh, and it kind of builds like it's it's like taking it in whereas the s with the se deals with those emotions by sort of uh bringing forth putting out mm -hmm. right that's you know, what i was Paul, i was oh i was thinking when i was listening to you that it definitely sounds like one behavior too because i know ones yeah. when they get shaken they they disintegrate pretty bad into that feeling of things falling under them and all that. Yeah, that's true. And, and it can be hard to separate those different parts of the personality. Like, like, you know, being a INFP and not a four or a nine is sort of an odd combination, <laughs> but you know, there's a lot of that. Yeah. I mean, I've always, I've always had, frankly, um, I've always had personal challenges with anger. And as a child, I, I had to, I had to um, see a social worker to help me with the anger management. Um, you know, it, it was more in the sight of, of like injustice. Uh, you know, if I saw other kids back on other kids, that would get me angry. But I, that's sort of, maybe, maybe that is type one. It, it just sort of builds, it builds, it builds. And then I release it and everyone goes, whoa, what just happened? Because it just sort of explodes out. But it's not a graceful expression. It's not a graceful movement. It, it's almost like it takes force. It takes energy to bring, to transpose that feeling from an internal sensation to something that, that I can express through my body and others could subsequently feel. That's a good insight, Erica. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, and thank you for that. That's actually, that's a, that's a very good thought to internalize. Yeah. Um, that makes sense to me. Um, I understanding the pathology of how ones deal with anger that it sounds mm. spot on. They they or, they disintegrate into fourness and mm. it can be overwhelming their their emotions that, to process in the moment. Yeah. Or alternatively, you could be a sexual four, and sexual fours are known as the angry fours, and they like to unleash their anger on other people. Mm. He's retyping <laughs> you now. <laughs> uh, he is, he, he is just trying to throwing me out an NE possibility. <laughs> Christian Christian tried to convince me I was type four uh, just after he tried to convince me that Apple products were superior to Android and PC. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. We're going on an NE tangent now. I have to like rein you guys. <laughs> Sorry. But um, no, no, great chat, great chat, guys. <laughs> and, and so what I'm getting out of this is that ISFPs, um, when they're feeling emotions, they're more likely to translate into motion, some sort of motion or doing or or creating where like 
all FI users do create with their emotions, but like INFPs, like what Paul said so eloquently, it's like a, or maybe this is FI in general too. It's like when you shake a pop and, and the fizz builds up, that's like a really good pic picture in your mind of how FI is like. So that's a really interesting insight. And so any thoughts before we switch topics? Well, I, I think that um, because SI is introverted, so it's it's looking inward and SI is about like cataloging and categorizing experiences. So I think that's why INFPs are a lot more in with their emotions because I think the um, the inclination is to analyze. So that's like you feel the emotion and then you analyze. Um, whereas because SC is more kinetic, it's more in the moment, it's more external, um, it is extroverted, um, then, um, the, then the, um, the translation of the emotion is physical. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that is the biggest difference. Yeah, that, that is amazing. Yeah, I, agree. I agree 100%. Yeah, that makes perfect yeah. sense. Yep, it's really yeah. good. Yeah, that's a great distinction about how FI, SI tends to take their emotions and bring it into analysis, heavy analysis, and FI, SE tends to take it into action and motion. That's amazing. And so any other thoughts before we change the topic? Um, yeah, I had a thought just about like the introverted nature of SI and NI. Um, I was thinking how like both of the types I think you can take your FI and you can kind of keep it inside with that other introverted function. So like with SI, as, as uh, they were just saying, it's like more of an analyzing and cataloging. And I think it's also like looking to the past. Like I've noticed a lot of INFPs, um, if they had a very strong emotion in the past, like it can be difficult for them to um, sort of let go of that or like um, it stays with them in a different way, I think. And I think with ISFPs and with the NI, um, if you're experiencing a strong emotion in the present, it can affect more like the future pacing of like, at least that's been my experience. Like it could be like, oh, I'll, I'll be stuck in this forever. Or like my, the future, you know, might continue on in the same uh, similar way. And so I think for both types, you kind of disperse like the intensity of FI with your PE. So kind of like we were saying, like with the movement for the ISFPs, you're using SE to kind of like disperse or like express the intensity of the FI. <laughs> and then maybe for INFPs, there's like using their, you know, their amazing NE to kind of uh, think of new possibilities or whatever, whatever that sparks them. That's like their way of maybe dispersing uh, their FI. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's accurate. I would say um, that's I think why um, with the, um, the that dispersal of emotion, it probably tends to be a little bit more abstract with um, the writing and and those similar kinds of activities. I I, I heard a YouTuber describe it. Thought it was pretty apt that um, with ISFPs, um, they want to bring the future into the present, and I the SE, and then. Um, INFPs want to bring the past into the present. Um, so I thought that was a, an apt uh, distinction of how, of how that, those two types differ. That's a really good difference, Kurt. Like how NI causes like a future pacing in ISFPs and they try to bring that into the present. Whereas like SI brings a past orientation where that's being brought to the present by the INFP. Yeah, and a, another differentiator is the ability to go off topic, like anyone can go off topic, but I noticed like extroverted intuition has like a talent for in two seconds going off topic. And like NE is known as like alternate universe thinking or parallel universe thinking where like they start talking about something like completely out there. And it, sometimes it manifests in the form of wordplay or puns, which we started this panel off with. Like Paul, changed his name to like, uh, like I'm a fine sight, <laughs> which is like a pun with the INFP uh, personality. It, it's like the functions like create the pun fine sight. And 
<laughs> yeah, so when you're trapped in a room of INFPs, they will pun you to death. I'm kidding. <laughs> but <clears throat> sorry, I'm sick, so I'm also coughing. Um, I just thought of a Mean Girls quote. <laughs> <laughs> What's the Mean Girls quote? I can't hang out. <laughs> I'm sick. <laughs> and then Regina George says, boo, you whore. <laughs> <laughs> Still the best movie of all time. It's so good. Yes, I, I'm so glad you like it too, Paul. Oh, it's so good. And, and Joyce, when you're saying any just goes on tangents, I'm just gonna jump oh. in and say like, oh, I have a thought about that. But that would be too on the nose. Go, go, Eric. Yeah. yeah, with with extroverted intuition, it's like a thought leads to a thought that leads to a thought that leads to a thought, and now you're at like the ten thousand thought that they had. So you have like a hundred different thoughts in one conversation flow. And that's how you can also tell someone who uses like extroverted intuition. They just jump from every topic. And so Erica, sorry. <laughs> um, I'm backtracking slightly, but um, I'm going to reference one of my friends who's an ISFP. And once she and I were talking about how we like to interact with the world and our own emotions. Um, and she said, and I, I would love to hear what the ISFPs on the panel say about, say about what she said is I said, I like to understand, like, that's my, that's my big thing. Like, I want to understand it all. Um, I want to analyze it. I want to come to conclusions. And then I want to help based on that. And she said she, she is like that too, but that she wants to impact people. Um, so she wants to like gather how she's feeling and then impact the world and, and bring impact to the person um, in, individually in a very um, specific way. So like through, she, 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 she's, she's on brand, she paints. She likes her art to specifically target certain people. Um, and that, I, I thought that was very interesting about her. Yeah. I wondered what you guys thought. Fascinating. Uh, it was an ISFP, right? Yeah. With ISFPs, you'll notice that there's, a, because they have NI, there's a certain type of focus or singularity with their, with their passions and what they're trying to convey. So like with the art that you're talking about, Erica, I was thinking about how like, because like, and I finds it easier to have like the one topic that it's going to like expand on indefinitely. Um, so my friends at Practical Typing, how they differentiate NI and NE is that NI knows a lot about very little, NE knows a little about a lot. And so the painter you were talking about, Erica, she seemed to be she she seemed to know a lot um, about a little, and that's why that's how she created her impact. So, yeah. There's just a focused nature to NI. And so a way to tell apart like INFP and ISFP is by like measuring the sheer randomness of the conversation. INFPs just are like a lot more sheer random than ISFPs. <laughs> um, yes. And so I was wondering with your functions SE for I I ISFPs and NE for INFPs, how can you tell apart that auxiliary function in you guys? Uh, I'll go. Um, so I, what I, I've noticed that there's a lot more of a, um, uh, an abstract nature um, with NE versus SE. Um, that's a lot more, um, I guess, it's more conscious because like NI is also abstract, but it's tertiary for ISFPs. For us, it's more conscious. So um, we're, I think I've noticed in the, the, the topics that we're interested in are gonna be more abstract and theoretical. Um, whereas like SE or ISFPs are more concerned with um, the present, the here and now, and, and just constantly reacting off of like um, whatever external stimulus that is happening in that moment. So like I have an ISFP friend and, um, and he, likes, he likes abstract topics. Um, like we were talking about um, uh, some sort of political philosophy and I had a, I happen to have a book on it, and it's the the book on this particular political philosophy is very dense, and it's written a lot of academic jargon, and I love it. I you know, <laughs> I mean, I own it. So, and I I I eat that kind of stuff up. And when I um I was gonna have my friend borrow it because he was really interested in learning more about this political philosophy, but when I explained the nature of it, of how it's very abstruse and and um and abstract, um and very theoretical, he's like ah. Eh, no, I'm okay. Is there like some sort of like quick YouTube video that kind of explains this? <laughs> you know, so I think um, I, I think um, that's 
a, a big difference I see with like NE and SE or ISOPs and INFPs. Um, I think ISOPs can be interested in more abstract topics, but I think like the level of depth that they might want to explore with that is going to be um, maybe less than, than an INFP. Here's my hypothesis. So I think with ISFPs, because they have NI, they like to explore abstract concepts if there's an endpoint, like a purpose to, to, to understanding it. So it, it'll be more like, is there a reason to pursue this abstract thought? Like type of NI kind of like is more directed with its focus and it has like a clear, like it wants to go in with an intention. Whereas like with INFPs, I feel like it's, it's a general NE extroverted intuition, like hungered for things like to learn <clears throat> and to take in all this abstraction, even if there's no defined end for it yet. Right. I, I would agree with that. It's, it's, um, for us, it's like an, an, an end in itself. Um, yeah. whereas I think especially because, um, ISOPs have TE, so there's an even more of a focus on like, okay, what is the purpose of this? So you have the NI and the TE and it's very kind of like, um, what are we doing with this? Yeah. I, I really like what, uh, Erica said about wanting to understand the world. Uh, with with any when I think when it's INFPs make these connections these random tangents that make the IJs want to lose their minds, it's it's not just not doing so <clears throat> just to shake up a situation, but to present a more complete understanding of the world. If if we're always looking at these ideas these these lens perspectives in which we can perceive the world, and we're connecting them. So by doing a little tangent and, um, or we might just call it thinking, um, where again, we're just, we're creating a more complete understanding of what this, what this world is, this world we're trying to observe. And there's that, perhaps there's that, please, other NFPs, like step in if I'm uh, misrepresenting you, but I, I, I think- You're doing good. This uh, this under understanding of the world then permits that that insight, that enlightenment that we can just bestow on other people after that, um, and that takes a lot of exploring connections um, with the uh, with the SC and the NI of the ISFP, which is just I think I think the most beautiful function pair that God ever created. There doesn't need to be all those tangents, not just looking for the ideas, but the opportunities, um, you know, and those opportunities that they're look that I, I think SE looks for are for immediate impact. So in order to have an impact in the way that they're kind of best equipped to, whereas the INFP is going to have to discuss and play with ideas and try to connect all these things to then create something to bestow on others, the SE, the SFP allows them to see those immediate opportunities for impact and act more quickly, act more expediently. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, I think a really great word for SE is opportunity in contrast to NE possibilities. So that's another differentiator too. ISFP, your thoughts? Yeah, I would like to comment on what Christian said. So something that I guess I kind of realized about myself um, having SE in like in terms of the friend that you were talking about, which, you know, I don't think this is like without exception, but I think having SE, I, it's more about learning style than it always mm -hmm. is about the subject itself. And so that's probably why, you know, he wasn't as receptive to whatever you're going to send him, but he probably, if I'm not mistaken, was really receptive when y'all were actually face to face and he was able to engage as many of his senses as possible. Mm. Because I know that's how I am too. Like you send me a podcast or article or something, it's gonna be like <laughs> some news fest. Okay. But we can take that same like concept or topic and I could be right there with you for hours on end, mm -hmm. you know, if I'm interested in it. So I that's another thing is that the more senses that I'm able to engage and stuff like that, then the better, you know, I am or 
the better that I could like engage with you or whatever. And I mean, honestly, that was true for me in school as well. Like just sitting there, like listening to a lecture was like one thing, but like if the teacher is like helping me mm. on like a one-on-one -on -one thing and I can actually do it with my hands and everything, then that helps me learn the routine information a lot more than just like, oh, read chapter 30 and remember page 22 or, you know, whatever. Yeah, really, it's, it's, it's multi it's sensorial, it's experiential. Mm, yeah. Right. It's not as, not as abstract, but you can you can get a very complete understanding. Exactly. Of the my complete understanding has to involve my body. Right. Yeah. No, I yeah. I would um um no, you hit the the nail right on the head, Jamila. Um so my friend, I mean, we can talk about abstract stuff face to face. I mean, yeah. we'll like we'll have like seven hour hangouts and we'll just be talking about a wide variety of different conceptual topics um, and we'll get, you know, be very engaged in it. So I think the medium is very important. So, mm -hmm. um, so I think face to face, yes, we can discuss it. Um, but when it is more kind of passive um, or just abstract inward, um, then it's, I think um, there, there's a, a little more um, reticence to wanting to engage with those topics in that particular way. Mm -hmm. I have two, my, two of my closest friends are both SFPs um, and they are the exact same way, Jamila, exact same way, um, where it's like, if I send them something to read or to watch that's exciting to me, they're kind of like, they'll forget about it or they'll say like, oh, this, you know, I, or sometimes even if I ask them how they are and I'm not with them, they'll actually say like, I, I didn't know how to respond. But when I'm with them, they I have the best, the most um, meaningful talks and things that are really important to me. So, and they've also helped me to um, stay, learn to stay present. Uh, to be honest, because it's like in moments yeah. where I'm caught up in something that's happened two days ago, they're sitting there going like, "You don't have to worry about that right now. Stop." You know, and I'm like, "Just be here." And I'm, I love that. It's something that's been a very helpful thing in my life. Yeah, like. SE is known for being like a kinesthetic learner, like hands-on learning, in the moment learning, like with your senses involved and like Paul said, very ex experiential. And so I was wondering, what is everyone's learning styles? Well, I definitely like doing and I like seeing. So like visual will probably be like second maybe. Um, and in terms of like a uh, like a literal like academic setting, discussion based is also really helpful for me too, as opposed to like traditionally like a lecture or something like that. Um, but yeah, I definitely learn best by doing. Yeah, um, for me, um, I guess particularly in an academic setting, I think that um, I learn best um, probably. Um, if we're specifically talking about a lecture, I do better when the, um, I, I guess it depends on the subject, but if there's, there's not only engagement with, with the class, but also just kind of like a, a breaking down of concepts, um, and then, um, and then trying to tie it together into a bigger picture. Um, but that in combination with reading, I do best at, um, it's it's harder for me um, if um, when I'm learning something if there's um, just uh, straight talking like I understand things better when I actually read um, what's on a page um, because it allows me to process the information better where if somebody's just continually talking at me sometimes especially if it's something that I don't know about like it takes me a beat to really process the information. Um, I, and this is kind of a, a, another, I think, difference between um, INFPs and ISFPs where, um, and I was talking about this with my ISFP friend, where he, like, he's fine kind of um, maybe doing some sort of um, um, conceptual or uh, learning, but, but that has to quickly move on to something more kinesthetic and um, um, tangible and more action oriented where I can um, 
So like if it's about learning about a sport, I might be more inclined to read about it first and learn how to do it and then go out and then actually learn it as opposed to learn by doing. Um, I'm always inclined to just learn first, then do rather than learn by doing. See, that makes no sense to me at all. <laughs> I like it. No, I, I relate to that a uh, bit, Jamila, maybe in a slightly different way, but of having to sort of interact with the problem. Um, yeah. <laughs> right? And you're like, what? You mean not getting your hands dirty? What's that? Um, I, uh, you know, sometimes if I'm, if I'm listening to something, yet I have the opportunity to visualize it, it helps. Um, I, I think visual information can pack a little more content into it than just auditory because it's all information at once rather than information kind of going through time. You get it all at once. Um, like uh, David Kiersey's books, Please Understand Me, Personality. Those are, I think, I found them really easy to understand because they had the matrices, they had the diagrams. But in a strange way, I relate to, to Jamil's need for interaction, but I would say on the intuitive end of the spectrum, which would be, I, you know, I need to connect it to other things. I need to to interact with the idea and play with the concept. So if, if learning a concept or learning a fact, I need to be able to ask a lot of questions and how it relates to this concept over here, how it relates to this fact over here. So it's almost like a mental form of getting your hands dirty. I'm so exactly the same way as Paul. Exactly, exactly the same way. I can't Whoa. just, yeah. Elaborate. I can't. Um, if say I'm, more. If, if, if I'm supposed to, yeah, say more. Um, if I'm supposed to, um, if, whenever I've been given an idea, trying to study it first um, is very difficult for me. Um, I would prefer to play like, but here's a good example of it. Um, there's like, when I'm given something to put together, I'd rather put it together by like playing with the, it all on my own failing and then learning on my own. It's very um, chaotic. Um, I, and I really relate to all the chaotic good. I would say that I'm a kinesthetic, but it's almost, it's more intellectual kinesthetics than it is physical often. Um, so I, I often see problems or situations as things to experience in the moment and then uh, process afterwards um, and then figure out later and then get better at it. It's like I said, it sounds really super ADD and it sounds super chaotic, but it's just my process. School was hard for me. So I tend to um, apply the way I learn on my own in my own little chaotic way now as an adult and it, it works a lot better. Yeah, I'm gonna have to like <laughs> jump in there too because I definitely relate to what my, all my fellow INFPs have been saying uh, like Christian, yeah, with yeah, breaking down the concepts, and I love to read about. It. I think I really enjoy reading if it's something I'm like really invested in and passionate about. But when it comes to an area where I'm less confident, which could be something like home repair or cooking, uh, like I'll I'll have the instructions in front of me, and I'll start like I'll start to read them like like slowly, step by step, and suddenly I find myself like just scanning. And then I'm like, well, I'm bored now. So I just want to like touch whatever it is. And, you know, like, like, so I could be fiddling around with like the pipes under the sink because what's the worst that could happen, right? <laughs> just by <laughs> fiddling with it. But it's almost like, yeah, it just like something makes the, pr the problem like, it sounds silly to say because I'm interacting with the real world, but it makes it more real to me. Like it's like, okay, now that I'm engaging with it on this additional level and and I can always refer back to the written material I have. I suddenly feel like I'm examining it from like multiple angles. And it's like, okay, like it's one thing to read about like, oh, you know, this is this, you know, use this flange, you know, on this pipe, so on and so forth. But then like when I'm actually looking at, okay, this is it. And like, I actually feel just more engaged that way. Even if it's not something I can necessarily do smoothly or well, and it might take me multiple tries to get a handle on it, so to speak. I really like, um, I really love Paul's description of NE, which I guess you all related to. Um, I'm trying to remember what he said. It was like, you you have to 
compare what you're learning to other things or like um, explore. Um, I feel like that's such a great description of NE. And I, I think it helps like understand people with NE much better. Like it helps me understand them better. Um, and I definitely think you like thinking of the people that I know that have NE, it's like, oh yeah, that makes so much sense mm -hmm. that their brain works that way. It's like always expansive and it's not that they can't stay on topic. It's that they're always comparing to other things, which is such a cool thing because I don't really do that. I mean, I guess in a way, SE has its own form of that. I think like you're able to quickly make connections between other physical things that exist. Um, like, oh, I, you know, comparing different textures or colors or things and uh, maybe in that nature. Um, but yeah, for myself, I agreed a lot with what Jamila said. Um, I learn through doing and visualizing and seeing. And I think also when it comes to like the more abstract or um, conceptual things, I need them to be like boiled down to just like um, the essence of like, I need, like I need a boiled down concept to, to get it, to sort of like anchor me and then I can go from there. Yeah, that's a really good point, Kurt, about how like NE extroverted intuition is expansive and it learns by like being able to connect that current idea and play it with it in like this expanded, almost like interconnected concept. Like everything is interconnected and they kind of need to play around with it to, to understand the world better. Whereas like NI, like you said, Kurt, so beautifully, it has like this urge to boil things down to its like origin or boil things down to its root and in order to like fully grasp it. And so it's more of a narrowing down process. And so AJ Drenth, what he says about like NI is that it's convergent and that NE is divergent. And I feel like that was really well explained through the learning styles, by the way. So learning styles can also mm -hmm. be separate a little bit from type two. Like you can have, like it's, it doesn't have a one-to-one -one correlation, but there's like a trend and it's just cool to talk about yeah. the trends. What Kurt was saying about his assessment of any, um, what was actually really helpful for me, um, a, a, pro a professor had actually introduced it and I was like, wow, like I wish I had known about this before. They're called mind maps. And I don't know if like, I'm gonna, uh, let me see if I can, nope. I don't know if it's, it might be hard to see. But like, that is how, I don't know if you can see at all, but that's like how an E, it's, it's basically like these little bubbles and have lines drawn to other bubbles, like these other nodes to, to different concepts. And so that was extremely helpful. Um, so you had like a central topic and then you have little lines drawing to kind of other subtopics. So not only does it break down the concept, but then you can see it in its totality, how all of the how everything is connected because there's lines everywhere to these little nodes and all going back to the central node and so like that is it when when kurt was describing any it reminded me of those mind maps that that um my professor used to do and it was extremely helpful for me when trying to learn a, a new concept because at that I, I didn't realize at the time but now looking back that's how my brain works then here's um a hypothesis or a possible comparison there then so Christian, if extroverted intuition is a mind map, then I'm wondering what NI is. So here's my hypothesis. If NE is a mind map, NI is a root cause analysis. So what a root cause analysis is, is like you have like this, all these points, but it's leading to like this, like convergent understanding. And then that's the root. And then you have everything else that's the cause. And so what I see it as is like, you see all this SE, you see all the, the phys like the physical symptoms of the problem or you see like all of this SE data and then or real time real. And then with that, you get down to like the, the NI root or maybe like, um so I don't know, NI root cause analysis. Cause NI, NI is way more pointed. It's way more like mm -hmm. drilling down to, to something. And that's how I would compare it. <laughs> and so, yeah. I like that. No, I think it's a great, um, I think that's a great kind of conceptual way of describing um, NI um, in comparison to to any with the mind maps. Um, 
uh, because you're you're because it's pointed, you're trying to get at the essence of something. Um, whereas you know, like any is more divergent. It's it's more holistic, I guess you could say, in in some sense. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I think in a way, and I, it's like has to focus on like one one concept at a time. <laughs> and it's like, I guess you kind of alluded to that before, Joyce, but it's like almost a more intense focus on that one thing. And in a way you're like, you're not relating multiple different things, but you're trying to relate everything to that one concept or like to that theme. Theme is like a big word that I relate to in, in that sense. Yeah. I'm writing a book right now and I was like debating whether or not to call NI theme because <laughs> it's like mm. looking for that red red thread be be behind everything. So mm. relating everything back to this red thread. So it's like the theme, you know? Yeah. So beautiful, Kurt. And so any other differences you guys see between your two types? I would say, um, so I, I, I don't know, ISFPs, you can chime in, um, but I, I'd seen this in a YouTube video. I thought it was really interesting that like the way ISFPs create their identity is by um, by identifying with archetypes. So like they, they, they see an archetype or they see, let's see, a character on TV or they, um, or maybe somebody famous and they're like, so their NI is like, okay, I have a concept of how I'd like to be. And then they, they're they focused on shaping their identity to that specific archetype or character, whomever is it is that they're, um, that they're aspiring to be. Um, my ISAP friend is like that. He, he really looks, um, I mean, he's very, very much um, inspired by people like Steve Jobs or um, um, just, just those like kind of creative entrepreneurs. Um, and so like, so he very much identifies himself in that mold and everything that he does or many things that he does is to kind of shape his identity in order to, um, in order to like embody or become that, that archetype or archetype of um, this kind of creative genius entrepreneur that he wishes to become. Um, so that's really interesting. And, and also just the, the, the characters, I think that, ISFPs seem to put on like um, David Bowie with his Ziggy Stardust. I mean, he had all these different personas. Lady Gaga, the same thing. Janelle Monae. I mean, it's just it's so awesome and cool. Just like they like the, they're they're incredibly idiosyncratic and unique. Um, these 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 identities, these kind of external identities that they create and project. It's very different, I think, for INFPs. I don't look to a particular archetype or. Um, or person, I, I can say like, oh, like I can say that they're inspiring, but I don't know like if I focus my attention um, or my identity formation on trying to be that particular person or or at least of having the qualities of that type of person. It's more of, I think because of the NE, it's a much more trial and error process. So there's there's much more of like trying on different identities and seeing which one fits and, um, then like your identity in the moment is 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 an amalgamation or, or summation of all the different identities that you've kind of tried on through throughout your life um so um i i think that is one difference that i've noticed that really resonated with me okay can you just um simplify that last part of <laughs> How we frame our and identity I versus how you frame <laughs> One way I see a difference is, um, like for me, I'm always kind of like searching what I am, who I am, what it means to be me. Is this really loud? I'm, I feel like something's in my ear. Okay, um, but my, the ISFPs mm -hmm. I know have like a vision of what they want to be. Um, whereas I'm kind of always an exploratory process of that. Is that I think, accurate? I think Maybe they Erica, like... you distilled what I said and probably answered Jamil's question, I'm assuming. That's that's basically what I meant without all the pretentious language. <laughs> no, no, you're okay. Something was also happening around me, so then that also kind of knocked me mm. off. But no, that makes Ladies sense. Ladies and gentlemen, Essie. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, I think I could agree with that. 
as an ISFP paradoxically, I'm like, well, no, I could agree to either one, but no, I think it makes sense. Like I see this um, vision of who I want to be or like this archetype of, you know, what I want to be. That makes sense. I, I feel that, I guess. I think I identify with the concept of identifying with an archetype, but I don't, I wouldn't say that I like try to become something. I feel like it's maybe more just like certain characteristics or like I'll see something in somebody and I'm like that, it, like I want that. I, I feel like that is, I don't know how to describe it. Yeah, like, like taking maybe so, not an exact carbon copy of the character traits that you see in somebody or in an archetype, but just maybe kind of picking and choosing and then making it your own and then trying to strive towards that, perhaps. Yeah, I relate to that. Um, like one example is when I look at ESFPs and how they're, um, I feel like they're more direct about what they want and they're more like unapologetic about it. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I, naturally, and I guess I'm just, I feel like I need more reasoning behind the things that I want or whatever, but, um, but that's like an example for me where I admire that freedom that they have. And I'm like, yeah, that's something that I, I want for myself too. And so I can kind of like make my choices differently and, and try to become or, or amalgamate that like into me. <laughs> Right. You see, right. You take the pieces and you make it your own. You That's in, unique and individual to you specifically. Um, I know that one thing that when I get together, with, uh, one way I like to differentiate me and my ISFP friend is she creates a mood and I will be a mood. Um, she's often like whenever we hang out, she's creating like at, she's very good at creating an atmosphere. She wants to feel a certain thing. So she'll actually create that that situation where she's feeling it either by um exploring a um a specific like uh activity or by decorating her home or painting or even like just by creating conversation around that mood and then she like goes oh my gosh don't you love when you feel this way or this is you know that kind of thing and for me i'll just be like yeah i'm i feel that way <laughs> you know what i mean and i like talking about it and i'll I'll, I like that experience of um, feeling safe in that moment to explore those moments, those feelings. So I really like that that difference between the two of us. Yeah, I, I, I see a lot of ISFPs as truly embracing whatever their FI bring it induces within them. Uh, there's a there's a respect of that emotion that can drive them towards particular action. Whereas when the INFPs are experiencing those feelings, there's a little more of an inquisitiveness and almost skepticism, right? Like uh, ISFP, I'm feeling this. Awesome. Let's do something with it. INFP says, oh, I'm feeling this. Why? Should I feel this way? Could I not feel this way? There's, there's more questions surrounding it. Um, I quite, I mean, I was, no, I was going to say, I quite enjoy being very introspective with those emotions, but that's not true. It's a freaking nightmare. But <laughs> I think, but the ISFPs that I know, there's just such beauty in the ability to honor that emotional experience and bring it forth rather than have to, rather than have to analyze it and control it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think... Um, really the biggest difference is just um, ISFPs are just so much more present, um, which is great. Um, they're just right there with you. Um, I can't be present. It's so hard for me to be present in the moment. Um, and um, it can be, you know, a good thing for introspection, but um, but especially when you get caught up in FISI loops, it, it can be debilitating. Um, so, and anxiety inducing. And so it's... Um, um, I, I think there's just so much more of an ease um, with ISFPs. Um, I've noticed where, like for myself and other INFPs, I, I, there's there's definitely much more of a neuroticism, um, and 
and in the big five sense of neuroticism. Um, so, and I, I think that there's, um, it seems to me like with ISFPs, there's more of like a, um, an amorphous quality to their emotions, like they're kind of general feelings, but with INFPs, because of SI, I think we get very specific with our emotions. So we tend to um, be introspective, analyze our emotions, then use SI to categorize them. You know, the, the, the various shades and colors of um, emotions. Uh, Michael Pierce talks about how INFPs know 50 different shades of sadness or happiness or, you know, whatever kind of emotion. So um, I, I, we're, I guess we're experts in that, in that way. Um, but um, so the, I, I think that's a really big difference that I've noticed there. There's a presence to ISFPs that is just not really there with, with INFPs. Yeah, I actually feel like I disagree with what you two were saying about ISFPs um, pinning down their emotions, because I almost feel like that's the nature of NI. I mean, FI, not necessarily FI with SI or even FI with NI, is to like ask why, like, what am I feeling? Why am I feeling it? What am I? Because almost like the same with TI, right? Like trying to get down to the root of like, the logical principle or whatever. I don't know. It's like the same thing with FI. So I feel like we probably experienced the same thing. Um, you're talking about the categories. I mean, obviously I don't really use FI. So, I mean, SI, so I don't really, I would like to say, I feel like I do that, but maybe I do it in a different way. I don't really know exactly what way. Maybe because then I, I would think like, oh, like what does this mean and what does this say about me? But I also feel like that's FI, but maybe y'all don't experience that. So now I'm just thinking out loud. Yeah, I, um, that's interesting. I think maybe, um, I think there is a why, I think both types ask why, but um, I think there's a, the process is different. Also, I think Enneagram probably influences a lot of this too, because my friend is an ISFP three. So I think there's more of like a sensation of an emotion, but there really is not a lot of time spent analyzing the emotions or sitting with the emotions. Um, whereas maybe with ISF ISFP fours, they tend to be more similar to INFPs in analyzing the emotions, but maybe they're using more NI to explore it and trying to narrow, like, like, you know, so you see the, the, the landscape of emotions, right, all before you. And so then you're trying to narrow in on like, okay, what am I exactly feeling? Um, not necessarily so that you can figure out what you're feeling right now. Whereas I think INFPs do that with SI, where there, there's the why, but there's also the intent of like, okay, I want to categorize this for later use. So that way, when I encounter it again, I know what it is already, you know, I, cause I've experienced it before. Um, where like with NISC, there's maybe like, the concern is just in the moment. And the, the thought process is I'll just assess it as it happens in the moment and maybe not necessarily need to be so, um, I guess pedantic or um, about like categorizing so neatly and perfectly the different kinds of emotions. But I, that's just my hypothesis or theory. Interesting. So Christian, what I'm hearing is that like with INFPs, they tend to like overanalyze and beat their emotions to death. Whereas I think like with ISFPs, because they have SE, they will analyze their emotions, but there's a certain threshold that where they're just go like, okay, I need to act or I need to do something. So exactly. they'll, they'll, they'll snap out of it. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think in fact, I forget who said it, but like there's an, there's sort of awareness that like my emotions are leading me to do something. And so it's like, if I'm feeling something this intensely, I need to like, I, there's just an awareness there that I have to take an action to, to uh, resolve it, I guess, mm. in a way. And, um, I really loved what I think Paul said earlier about honoring your emotions. I feel like that's so true. And I never thought of it in that way, but I, because 
you know, FI in general is very intense. And I feel like people without FI, or especially if they don't have it as a dominant function, um, they just don't really get that concept that like you're honoring what you're feeling. And I, it's like that, that whole concept of authenticity that is, is with, um, related with FI. I think that's like such a good way of putting it. It's like, I have to honor what's going on inside of me because it's mm. important to me. It's like, it's that motivation. It's like the, the compass that's, you know, kind of guides me is where, where to go. Um, I had another point, but I can't remember right now. <laughs> mm, that was, I love that you said that's true. Um, Cause doing anything other than honoring your emotions would be a betrayal of yourself and your identity. I'm sorry, guys. I've been a hot mess tonight, haven't I? <laughs> Coming in and out. I'm like Yay! trying like iPad and iPhone, and I mean, you could delete me. I don't. I don't like ah. Sorry you're, about the other day. Um, you're perfect right now. Seven yeah. out of eight. Seven out of eight of us are perceivers. Chaos was. <laughs> That's just chaos one was four. inevitable. I know. I know, and it, I mean, the best part was seeing the steam come out of Joyce's ears, but. Otherwise, like, no, it was, no, I'm just kidding. Okay, no. Uh, I was going to use this. No, but every time you made a weird hair, it was so nice. I was going to use this laptop to start with, and then I'm like, oh, I'll use this. I'll use, and then I'm like, oh, man, I should have just stuck with my first thing I was going to do. But am I supposed to answer a question? <laughs> <laughs> Booba reel. Good. I, yeah. I think just the Everything question is, like, if you've noticed, what are your what are the things that you've noticed personally about the difference between INFPs and ISFPs, just general? I guess general, like just like listening tonight, what I've really noticed um, is the ISFPs, when we are answering a question or, or are talking about something, we do tend to get to the point a little quicker. Um, and listening to the INFPs on the, on the, chat they'll just keep going and keep going and i'm like okay I, I i knew what you meant like five minutes ago and then you like just keep on elaborating and going and i'm like so i think that and i just is like you know i i understood the first time i i you know so oh i'm sorry i'm not trying to roast you guys <laughs> no i know it's just it's what it's you beautiful. said was so it's true accurate. it's just it's accurate. so accurate Hold us up. I know. We, it's just so, we have the disease. We know it's, what it's like. Oh. Yeah, it's all, it's in my head. I, I like I'm sitting there going like I'm listening to everything, and I'm like I really like I want to unpack yeah. it right now. Like we that's know, how I feel. What are we doing? <laughs> we still feel bad about it, but we can't help it. I can't. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so. <laughs> like, but, I mean, like, yeah, I have, like I have SFP friends who legit will say something, and I'm like la 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 la, like for a long time, and then they're like, right. And then they just like, no, I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> you know, so it's just, it's just I mean, as long yeah. as everyone, yeah. you know, yeah. gets it. No, it's a beautiful thing when, but I see that difference. We're just kind of like, we try to, it's like more like we get to the meat and potatoes a little quicker. Yeah. Um, so we can quick get to our dessert, you know, like finish dinner. <laughs> yes. And, you know, oh, yeah, they, still yes. like, you know, your eight course meal. And we like, we're like, yeah. Us. There's this there's this comic that uh, my ISFP friend sent me once, and it was two birds sitting on a um, on a pier, and it, one of them was like, "What is what is what do you think is ahead in life for us?" Oh, yeah, and 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 the I and the one bird goes, "You know, I really think those fries on the pier. Let's go get some." And they're like, "No, but like, what what do you think it means to be alive and all this stuff? And what do you think is out there for us?" And the bird goes. I still think it's those fries on the pier. And I'm like, <laughs> and so she said that to me because she's like, because I love hearing all of your like deep thoughts because she's like, because I re resonate with so much of them, but she tends to like get to the, get to what we're going to do so quickly and how we're going to e experience it together and how it's going to be such a good experience for both of us. And so that's always been kind of fun for us. <laughs> she, um, I also wanted to add, uh, like I, uh, I've told, people this but like having an ISFP friend has been having like an alternate dimension of myself mm -hmm. um so that's been really cool for me and also uh just one of the one of the big things that she has commented on me and uh is that she says that she has she has two IN INFP close friends and she's always worried <laughs> they're not like she wants to like focus them back 
like when she's she's like trying to make plans i'm always like thinking about everything we could do and she's just like okay okay come on come back here and I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. She's like, I used to think that people weren't listening. And she's like, I'm realizing you're listening in a completely different way. And I'm like, yeah, my, my listening is thinking about what you're saying in such an abstract way. Um, and uh, she she's like, I've, I've learned to find it charming. But <laughs> she is, it was just a funny thing. Yeah. <laughs> She says are, that yeah. she, she says her INFP friends will look at her and almost daydream about her while they're while she's talking like they're just like she looks like looks like we're daydreaming about her and i'm like yeah because we like you um <laughs> we're just thinking about how great you are and all the good things you're saying so yeah yeah so with my typing service what i notice very evidently is like a person's perceiving access like with the n-i-s-e access no matter what type it is with like n-i or s-e they get to the point more quickly. Like Sheila said, like they get to the meat and potatoes. Like they're they're very focused, pointed with their abstract analysis. And you'll you'll hear it. Uh, whereas what holds true with like the NESI people that I've typed is that it tends to be a little more rambly. So <laughs> so yeah, a way to tell like NESI is you'll when they talk, you'll hear more of the the rambling on whereas NI is like boom. <laughs> so you'll tell by the succinctness by how they speak, where it is in the stack, like what perceiving access they use. I also wanted to add on about something I noticed here, but then also just, you know, in life is that any users, when they talk, they just, it's like they're thinking as they're speaking. Whereas mm -hmm. NI users, like you said, no matter where it is in their stack, I feel like, and I'm not saying this in a bad or a good way, but I feel like we take more time, like we think before we speak in a way, we can't like do it at the same time. Um, but like you guys, INFPs, it's like, she asks you a question and you're just like, boom, and you have an answer already. And it's like, wait, how did you do that? I don't understand. So. Yeah, no, that's that's funny. I, I what what's interesting is even though like we are both introverted dominant types, so we might not, um, we might not, uh, we might think a little bit more than um, like us INFPs might think a little bit more before we speak as compared to our ENFP counterparts. But I think we speak even sooner than ISFPs. Um, I, I the one thing I've noticed with the ISFPs is they're very much surveying everything. They're kind of in the back you know, um, uh, kind of analyzing things. I, I've, I, me and Erica joke about ISFPs. Um, they, they choose you as a friend, <laughs> you know, you don't, they don't go, to, they choose you, that you don't come to them. Um, and, and so my, I, I told this to my friend and he laughed because he's like, I need to have, feel a sense of control in that, in that way. Um, like almost if like you have to be deemed worthy and then we will approach you. Um, first, so there's that, there is that like thinking a lot before you do something. Mm -hmm. Um, whereas like with, with the NE, um, yeah, like we, uh, this is how we explore ideas is we just talk and then we just see where it goes with the whole branching thing, right? The mind map mm -hmm. concept. So that, uh, so I think ISFPs even more so than INFPs are, are much more think first and then do, which is funny because SE is more kinetic, but um, yeah. I, I, I'm not sure what, maybe it's the NI in there yeah, that, that, NI yeah. Sure, like, and I even mean more so like the speech pattern. Mm. It's like pause, think, talk. Yes. Like pause, think, draw conclusion, express. Pause, yeah. think, draw conclusion, express. That's kind of how I see NI and SE. But like I said, I feel like Indy is thinking as it's talking. And it's like, eventually you're gonna get what I'm saying. I don't know when, but you're gonna understand eventually. Right, no, I think that's the perfect way of like how you described like NISE speech. I think mm -hmm. um, somebody said that NE is like, you can tell also with NE users is if they interrupt themselves a lot because like an, I, yeah. an idea yeah. pops in their head. So you'll notice they'll be like, oh, uh, uh, you know, and then, and then they'll kind of go off on a, or clarify what they said, you know, so there's a lot of a like, caveat. yes, a caveat. Uh, all, a caveat. there's a always, caveat. always caveats. <laughs> with, yeah. With yeah, disclaimers, qualifiers. Oh, yeah. With, with, uh, me and, yeah. me and um, I, my, my uh, even INTPs do this too, like um, me and my IMP friends mm -hmm. will, 
will always joke that we have we have to have our caveats and disclosures before we get to our actual <laughs> here's here's the definitive truth blah 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 but wait actually now that i think of it the complete opposite could be true and here's why right it just it grows like the nise <laughs> I and i wonder if it's because his ideas they when they're expressed they, they have more form mm. um when when they're spoken mm. because they exist they exist between minds these concepts so bringing them between minds in that mental space of conversation can help to clarify those concepts where if the se if the se user is surveying it's because those the the sensory information they're picking up it's there it's mm -hmm. it's present right. it's true you yeah. don't need to debate whether or not like that shirt is teal right for example i mean this is a basic example of like se but I mean, like there's so many things that that SE pulls together, but they're observable facts. They're not really debatable, right? In the they're same empirical. way, they're empirical. Yeah, yeah. I think I think yeah. The, with with ideas and abstract or language, since language is abstract, as you're saying it, I think there's some sort of um, like you don't understand what you're saying. Almost, you aren't making the connection until there's when you say it, and then there then there's a physiological response in your brain where there's a connection made. Um, whereas like with, yeah. with probably with SE when it's empirical, just it's right there. So the, the, the eye is taking the information immediately. Um, and there's not much processing that has to be done, um, because it's not abstract. So there's not like a decoding aspect to it where there right. is with language or at least abstract concepts. Yeah. When it's in your mind, it, it exists, uh, when an idea is in your mind, it exists without form, without shape. Mm -hmm. And right. when you speak, you're actualizing it. You're you're expressing it, and thus giving it more concrete form. Right, right. Yeah, and so that speaks for extroverted intuition's nature of needing to brainstorm out loud or to bounce ideas off with other people, because that's like the more real form of exchanging ideas. It, it like the ideas feel more real as you're exchanging them in real time. I'm guessing, whereas like with with NI, it's kind of like pressure cooking or baking its ideas inside its own head first, like trying to get its shape inside its head before expressing it. Whereas NE, it expresses the idea out loud to, to give it form, right. it seems yeah, like. I think yeah, so. We're more worried about perfecting those mm. words more. Um, like mm. when you ask us a question, it's like you want to like to, to narrow that NI down and sort of trying to like get the perfect word, the perfect, way of you know, saying it where any is just you know if you throw 10 things at least one will be perfect but we're right. like wanting that one perfect so it's right i, I think the, more apprehensive. the fun for us is in the actual exploration of the idea i think that's why we the, do the brainstorming out loud also because we haven't our in our intuition is extroverted so we're you know we're going to be more vocal about it um but I, yeah i think i think for us we just we enjoy the process of of that exploration out loud, and it's not as personal as too. Really, either. right, right, there exactly. Are, it's more personal that our concepts are more personal, um, you know, because our NIFI is tied together, you know, internally. So when we're processing that, when we put it out there, it's kind of like a little more scary. And we're like, "Ooh, here's our concept," you know, like don't laugh at it, you know, or you. It's not as personal. Yes, absolutely. I think I think I, I myself as an INFP feel that way too a, a little bit, but I'm I think I'll pro I'm probably more open to the discussion aspect of it. Doesn't have to, especially if it's still in brainstorming conceptual. It, it, ha it hasn't been concretized yet, so like there's still um, I'm okay with maybe more. Um, well, it depends. If it's on like Twitter, I rarely tweet because I'm afraid of criticism, but that's maybe my inferiority. <laughs> but um, but, uh, um, but yeah, no, I, I think I, Sheila, what you said was, I think absolutely nail on the head. Um, there, there's, because it, your, in, your intuition is introverted, so it's a lot more personal to you, um, where for our intuition, it's, it's abstract, but it's talking about abstract stuff in the external world. So it's not as personal to us. Yeah, I mean, you guys probably have some that end up being really personal to you once you like figure yes. out the ones that are like most important to you, your FI. Right, um, right. I think 
I think once our SI has concretized our, like, after the brainstorming of a theory or a value or whatever, once our SI has concretized it, that's when it becomes very personal to us. And so then, yeah, it's, it, yeah, it's a different, I guess, same result, but different way of going about it. I think also the ME, it's like, there's always going to be a new idea. And so there's not as much as of an attachment to anything really. Mm. Whereas with NI, like that's something I've noticed between me and an INFP friend I have. Um, we'd be working on a project and I would feel like I want to put everything into this. So it's like the most successful that I could be, you know, like the most perfect expression, kind of like what Sheila was saying. Whereas my friend, he just was never as attached, um, even if it was like his um, his baby that he was birthing. Um, that's a weird metaphor, but um, <laughs> that's a perfect metaphor. <laughs> it's precious and it's painful. Yeah. <laughs> right, but he, he would not be as attached to the thing as I would be, like after we've invested, because it was like there's new ideas out there to go explore. You know, there's it, life didn't just become this one thing. Um, so I think that's like. That's another difference that I've noticed. Yeah. Um, and then I had one other thing I want to mention. Um, it's not kind of not related, but I just remembered. Um, a difference between the types, and this might just be anecdotally, but I feel like what I've noticed with the, the few um, ISFPs and INFPs that I actually know personally, um, I feel like the ISFPs have a potential to like kind of be more emotional or more broody, like just as a general thing, whereas the INFPs, they seem to have like higher and lower spikes of their hmm. emotion. I don't hmm. know why that is necessarily, but I've, <laughs> I feel like I've noticed that. Okay. Yeah, I relate to that a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Where these, and, and I wonder if that's, if that's any related, but like, you know, some sort of different thought pops in your head and you're like, oh man, great. Everything's sunshine and rainbows. Another idea pops in your head and you realize how dark the world actually is. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be really, Joyce is silently laughing. That's fantastic. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, probably because she, she sees that in me every time we talk. It's like she doesn't, what's Paul gonna feel today, right? Um, it's okay, this is the roast of the INFP this whole hour and hour or two. So that's fantastic, I love it. Uh, yeah, these different ideas can come and they can, they can, they can, like, I guess they can spike those emotions. Yeah, that is a very good observation, Kurt. I bow to you for that one. That is yeah. fire. I, I would agree. I, I think it also depends too, like, um, how um, developed um, the INFP's NE is. Um, so I'm just immature. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, see, I, I, I uh, have STJ parents, so my SI is a lot more developed than my NE. So I think, mm -hmm. I think, uh, in the OPS system, if you're a jumper INFP, if you're FISI, then you are maybe more consistently melancholic. Or um, mm. whereas, like INFPs are more tapped into their NE, they could be, they have the. Um, uh, yeah. greater variation in, in their, uh, I'm, uh, their I'm, emotions. I'm, I'm, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I've just, I, I'm very tapped into my any. Yeah. Um, well, you had NFP parents. Way more. <laughs> I did. I had NP parents. Um, so, uh, but I'm really, I'm very tapped into it, um, overdeveloped,ly So oftentimes staying in idea places way too long. Um, that sounds fantastic. So, but it's, like, <laughs> it's, I love it, but it's, it's, uh, I, I love it. I act, uh, yeah. So that's, that's, I, I'm just going to piggyback on Christian that I, I think that some INFPs or INPs in general will, you know, be tapped into certain functions a little more depending on how they were raised or whatever. But for yeah. me, uh, I use NE in order to regulate motion actually. So if I don't use it, I often get stuck in very, very dark, depressing places. <laughs> so, um, yeah. That's, That's really, a really good example. And so, Kurt, I loved your birthing example. And so I had an INTP friend once tell me that, like, NI is like birthing a baby. You're, it's like something that's very precious. And like, you're, you're very committed to that idea. And like, like, I guess, 
<laughs> a, a way of describing any and ni is ni is like committed to its ideas so it'll stick with one longer whereas ne is non-committal with its ideas or like polygamous with its ideas <laughs> <laughs> promiscuous so yeah yeah and so, ideologically yeah. promiscuous <laughs> like ideologically Ideal promiscuous that's I lovely erica <laughs> these ide ideas are like a dime a dozen for ne because there's just so many of them when the, some of those ideas get into that FI world, that's when they're super serious. But when you got NI, those concepts are, are almost personal from the get-go. Or to say the concept is personal mm -hmm. from the get-go, right? Yeah, and when we're not very good with the whole any thing. So when we do think of a concept, we're like, oh, wow, we thought of something, you know, original or but it's like <laughs> one <Yeah>. thing, <laughs> you know, it's this like- a concept I found. Yeah, and then we ride with it till it's our ride or die, and I. Yeah, and to like complete like what my INTP friend was saying, like so he said, and I is like birthing, and like with humans, like, and then he told me that NE is like birthing with with like fishes, like when they have billions of eggs, <laughs> and like with that, you like you have like some sort of feeling that one of them will survive, right? So it's okay to like birth many eggs because that it that increases the probability that at least one will be good right so yeah, <laughs> I thought it was I also, really funny I, I also, there's like one funny thing between me and my uh, friend is like well just SFPs in general is that they'll like they'll see how something's supposed to go and they'll go through it and I'm sitting there going like wait 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 you don't it, especially with problems like they're like I know it's just going to end badly and I'm like <laughs> well why why do you have to keep going that way I'm like, there's so many other things you could do. And they're like, well, I guess so. And they're just like ready. They're like, they're just accepting of it. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, so, um, it's, 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 there's some special, you know, that they, they see their future and they, they have that. For me, one of the benefits I, I like about any is that I, even though I don't really like have that future vision as well, or, you know, I, I feel like I have so many ways of going through life that's going to be okay because process, you know, process and journey. That is so true. Like NE sees the multiplicity. And so an example of NE um, that Paul did one, when, like one of the times that we talked is, um, so I was telling Paul about my NI. I was like, so someone, you know, wrote an article for our website, Dynamic Archetypes, that I'm going to be releasing with Paul in a few months. And in this article, they, they talk about how your dominant function is like your nose and like you can't see your nose, but it's there. And then Paul, like within a second, this is what Paul said. Oh, yo, yo, like, I mean, no, he didn't say yo. <laughs> I might have actually said, said yo. Yo, yo. <laughs> he said, you know what? It's like, it's like your eyes. It's like you can't see your eyes, but you see everything through your eyes. And I'm like, oh, that's so N-E. Like extroverted intuition, what it will do is it'll, it'll take my idea, immediately spin it around, and then it'll be like, whoa, that was like mind blowing. So that's another cue I use like to tell if someone uses N-E. It's like, I'll, I'll be mulling over this one idea and then like the N-E user will go like, how about this? And then I'm like, oh, Wow, that was amazing. <laughs> so that was like an example of NE. NE is extremely quick witted and it's like reflexive and it's like, and then I'm like blown away by how it thinks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thanks for your N idea. Wait, here you go. New idea. Whoa. It's what you had, yeah. but different. Yeah. The INFP will remix it. Like they'll oh, remix the idea. Yeah. I was going <laughs> to tag on with what Erica said. I think, um, I don't know if this is like socionics, but like getting into the, the shadow functions a little bit. I think for ISFPs, we have, we're blind to N, E. Um, so that's like where we can become too intense in the one future that we think we're seeing or that we're able to see. And we're blind to like any, we're blind to other possibilities of how things could go. Um, so I feel like that's one of the ways that's like, especially if you, I don't know how to describe it, but like, I trust my NI a lot, but it's also like your tertiary function. So you kind of like peacock that function. Um, and so that's just something that I've seen as well. It's like an intensity in the, the future that I think is going to happen. Um, and like an inability in, in those types of moments to see 
outside of that. Yeah. I think where I see that with me, like say we're planning a vacation and I have this image of how the vacation is going to be. And I, I'm like going through my emotions of how it's going to be, how the weather is going to be, how everything's going to be. And then when we get there and it's not what I've thought it was going to be, I'm always like so disappointed in my vision of what I thought it was going to be. And it's so frustrating because it's like I've already locked on to what I think it's going to be. And when it disappoints, I'm just crushed. And so I've, I've learned to. And that's where we come in. <laughs> yeah, I've learned to try not to like get so locked on and have all this rolled into like the one thought and it's, it's frustrating do you guys do that other isfps yeah i hard relate to that uh the disappointment of like not seeing your vision come to pass is really tough i think infps have this too um because we do have the joyce you've talked about this before about the perfection of i think the ji dom um but it might maybe the process of it is different, but like I, I'm, I'm. I feel like I'm constantly disappointed with the reality of a situation and how how I envision it to be. <laughs> Real reality bites, but I think that, yeah, uh, like I really struggle with reality, and then I want to go escape into whatever I can to avoid it sometimes. Um, mm. But um, what I, I I do I do actually feel like if you with the, the benefit of any in that way because it can look very scattered and frustrating to people who are like, wait, this is how it was supposed to go. Now it's like, let's say we were going to go out and they were really excited about this restaurant and this restaurant got closed. And I'm sitting there going like, but there are so many other places we can go. It's okay. You know, and mm -hmm. it's, you know, that's just a basic example though. And then you're talking about the vacation that you worked for. And, you know, I, I, I can, I can see how that would be a difference. But yeah. reality does bite. I think with what Sheila said, um, it can sometimes make ISFPs appear almost like a more of a J because it look, can look mm. like you're not able to be flexible in the moment. Mm. At least like to other people, that, that dynamic can look more like a, a J tendency. Yeah, like say for example, yeah. if, if I did get to that restaurant that you're talking about, Erica, and I'm with you and it was closed and I had my heart, my FI heart set on, you know, the chimichangas there. And <laughs> damn chimichangas, I would just be like so mad. And I'd just be like, Ugh. and they'll be like, well, we can go somewhere else. I'd be like, but I wanted chimichanga. It's like when I lock onto that one thing, especially the FI and I, it's like so like, then my mood will just like, and then somebody will say, oh, well, let's go get some ice cream. And I'll be like, oh, okay, ice cream, you know, like, but in that moment, I just want to like be so angry because I had my heart set on it. Even things like projects, like when the project doesn't turn out right, like I get really self-critical and frustrated with myself. But at the same time, uh, when other people bring problems to me, I often want to play with their problems. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, but like you're, there's so many ways we could reframe this we can think about it differently and if somebody values that and actually wants that in a friend then um that, that that that's very beneficial and makes me feel valued so that is so true and so kurt i wanted to piggyback off of your point where isfps can kind of feel kind of j-like so the most common mistypes for isfps is that like isfps tend to think they're either infp or infj very often more often than probably they type as ISFP in, in my experience. And INFPs, a type they tend to mis mistype as is either INFJ or in some moments they might think they're INTP because they're very like, FI can be a very analytical function and they can almost go like, am I a thinker because I'm so analytical, but FI can be just as analytical. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And, and so, yeah. Uh, any other points? Any other points of differentiation you all have? Um, I think it's beautiful, the NI vision that ISFPs have. Um, you know, I like uh, Eric mentioned the playing with like, playing with ideas, playing with problems. With, with with any, it can seem like there's so many different ways something could go. And because there's so many ways it could go, we sometimes don't pick one. And it doesn't, doesn't move, right? We can respond to others, 
but initiation can be hard. But um, when you have that NI vision, like, like I, you know, when I, when I try to compose a song or write a poem, I get, write a couple lines and like, oh no, it could have been this. That's crap. And uh, you know, I can't stick to that. But when you have an NI vision of what it could be, that's a really beautiful thing to that sort of pathway that you can see the end of and to bring something to fruition. I, I think any can, can make that process more difficult. Whereas uh, NI was the, the NI and SE seems to, I think really, that pr- it really facilitates that, that process of achieving an outcome. Yeah, for me, that's very true, but the opposite is also true. If you don't have like an FI passion and an NI vision like in alignment, it's so hard to motivate myself to do anything. Hmm. Also, that's just not it. Like, if you're not engaging either with both ISFPs and INFPs, if we're not engaging a uh, TE well, hmm. then we're not gonna, we're not gonna. You know, I've seen it with um, both types. I mean, then we could stay in process too long. But it's my experience. Yeah. And if our FI is not on board, it, then it's just not, the train is not going anywhere. It's like all the time I'm like, I'm not in the mood to do that. I'm not in the mood to do this. Oh, I'm in the mood for this. It's like, I'm so controlled by that mood FI. And if my FI isn't feeling it, it is so hard to get motivated. Mm. Yeah, I think it's, it's like the FI motivation is like that initial spark, kind of like what you said about, oh, I want this food item specifically. And then you jump into your NI, how do I get that? Uh, and you envision it and you envision having your FI fulfilled and how how great that is. And if it's not there, it's just like what, the worst thing. Yeah. I, 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 I don't know why, but I just, I get the sense that isophemes just seem so much more, um, not only just action oriented, but just like, I don't know, I, I, they seem to have a better facility with their TE, like like they have a goal and they, you know, it's like they know what to do. And where I just feel like INFPs were just like all over the place. Um, I, I, you know, I think that, you know, if you're not passionate about it, ISFPs, you know, just won't do anything. But like, I feel that ISFPs seem to be more driven. And I'm wondering if that's an NI, t- uh, the, almost like, and you have all the same functions as them, but like ISFPs almost remind me sometimes of INTJs in just their, their, when they are passionate about something in their, their focus and their drive towards getting to that thing where it's like INFPs are more in, you know, like possibility land and, and not like, I, I don't know. There just seems to be a different engagement with TE for INFPs than there are for ISFPs. It just, appears to me that way yeah like um that's a really good point christian it goes back to paul's point where he's like the ne sees so many possibilities it can be hard to like narrow in and choose one whereas like the isfp might have an easier time with that but they might deal with the te like grip of them going like what if this work isn't good enough what if like i could be like like and then they'll go like am i skilled enough to put myself out there am am i good enough i don't know like i noticed with TE inferiors, sometimes like they can cripple themselves before putting themselves out. So I call it like crippling perfectionism. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, you know, for some of them, not for all of them, but so yeah. Definitely for me. (laughs) (laughs) I'm curious for you, Jamila, um, you know, when you get up in front of the group to sing, being an IP, Mm. how how is that for you? If you want to answer, I'm sorry, I'm putting you in the spot. No, you're fine. Um, I tell people all the time, being on stage is probably the most comfortable I ever am. Mm. It's not really like this um, expectation that I have to meet. You know, like, I don't know how to explain it. I'm just on stage and I can be my complete self even if, you know, I'm acting, but I'm putting on a character, it's like I have the freedom to express however I want to express. Nobody can tell me anything or like, I don't have to feel uncomfortable because it's not really a social situation. I'm just, you know, I can express however I feel like expressing. 
So, yeah. So then after the fact, when you get off the stage, is that when it kind of hits you or is it just over and, or are you, then are you thinking, you know, what, what did they think of my performance or like, do you go, do you deal with that? Yeah. Like I never, I never feel like, oh, you know, that was like a 10 out of 10. Like I never feel completely 1000% satisfied but I do always feel this satisfaction that I moved people and that is you know good enough I guess um but that does not absolve me from like crit critique like, I will watch videos over and over and over and find new things that I did wrong <laughs> every time that I watch something and then eventually I just shouldn't watch anymore but yeah thank you for answering that sorry i put you on the spot but i was just curious as a you know somebody who likes to create art and then i put it out there it's it's a little scary you know what the tribe is going to say and think it because yeah. te demon we're like we don't know what's the tribe thinking about us and you know mm -hmm. me at almost like my old lady age it's still it's like the thing that i just can't conquer it's my you know Dragon, I just can't slay. Yeah, I know for me, it's more so like online that really cripples me. I don't know. I feel more comfortable in person on stage than I do like posting online. I just think that that is actually significantly more intimidating. So, yeah. How about you, INFPs? Do you feel the same way with your TE and about the tribe? Mm -hmm. I'm absolutely terrified. This is why I was saying earlier, I rarely post on Twitter um, because I'm so <laughs> afraid of criticism um, that I would just rather not um, share my ideas. Um, I'd rather just keep them to myself or share them with people who I really trust. Um, I am, you know, having <laughs> been raised by STJ parents with, you know, high stack TE, um, and just the intensity <laughs> of truth that comes out of, you know, especially my mom who's an ESTJ, um, just the forcefulness of truth that comes out of um, what what TE says um, can be absolutely crippling and debilitating. So I, I have, um, while I admire TE so much um, for its power and its assertiveness, and it's confidence, but I am also terrified of it because of that, um, because of those qualities. Um, and so, and because I've experienced it, you know, in my 30 plus years on this earth. So, um, um, so I'm very hesitant um, to put my ideas out there, put myself out there um, because of, of, I'm afraid of what the tribe is gonna say. It's crippling sometimes. I am. Um... I relate a lot. I, I once, um, I, I used to do stage acting and um, I, it, the idea of ever watching that again was so stressful and it was a good learning experience for me to, to do that. Um, but also I write a lot, like a lot, a lot. And I have only shared publicly like one story and I got so much feedback on it, but I didn't even want any, like the feedback in general was really stressful to get. Even if it was positive, I was afraid of the positive because it was so personal. And it was also just, am I affecting people? Am I, <laughs> you know, how, how is this going to affect them? One of my favorite authors is um, Ellen Montgomery and I read her journals and she said something to the effect of, I don't write for anybody else. I just write for me. And I felt like that's a really good way of like engaging my TE, of, like thinking of it that way. So. Yeah, I actually try to think of things like that all the time. Like just thinking like, no, this is bigger than myself. Like I'm being selfish and I'm an idiot. Like it's not about me. So yeah, I definitely get what you're saying. Yeah, I've, I've struggled a lot in my life. And I don't know if this is like demon TE or if it's just like, natural human thing to like experience uh you know shame and uh just inferiority i guess maybe is a better word um but that's like something personally that i'm 
trying to work on is like this is the the idea that I actually have something to like offer to the community, um, and I don't know why. Um, I, I feel like I've learned to accept criticism for for the most part, but I and this might be a distinction that doesn't make sense, but for me, it's like when someone has a negative opinion about me personally, I, I guess I view that as more painful and scary. Um, which I'm not really sure why. Like, if you're just critiquing something like that I did, or like if it's good or constructive criticism, that's very different. But when someone has like a bad opinion about me, <laughs> that really bothers me. And um, I don't know if that's NI coming in again, because I feel like with NI, um, you're kind of like, you know, you're, it's that piece of like being aware of what other people are thinking. So if someone, ha if I think someone has like a negative opinion toward me and then it turns out to be true, I don't know why, but that really bothers, that bothers me so much. I don't know if anyone else relates to that at all. Well, I, I, I stress when people have bad opinions about me, but I'm trying not to. <laughs> so completely relate. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. This is, uh, <laughs> this is actually really nice to hear. Uh, because yeah, like I mean, I I used to do like stand up comedy for a long time, and I count myself. Granted, I haven't done it that often, but I count myself lucky that I've never had a hostile crowd, but I have had an indifferent crowd, you know. And like we're you know like with the literal deafening silence. Oh and, yeah, or so or the, the the polite laugh, you know. Oh. Like oh. bless those F, bless those fe users out there because. I, <laughs> You know, and, um, and, and I think this is like where my SI kicks in. It's like, hey, remember that time like 20 oh, years ago when funny. you were on stage? And, and, so, and you know, that nice older gentleman, like it will, you know, kind of in the middle of the round, just went like, <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, yeah, wasn't that fantastic? You know, and I'm just like stuck in this room with this like SI projector, you know, reliving like, <laughs> oh, no, painful nostalgia. And again, like, you know, like I'm fully aware, you know, like, you know, especially for something like stand up or any really performance, it's like that's not that bad. Like that's that can be a good night sometimes for people. But uh, and it's it's the same thing on Twitter. Like I find yeah, I'm not really comfortable like putting like my ideas or like you know really like you know weird possibly controversial perspectives out there. Like I'm quite happy making s silly puns. You know. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's fine because you know, like I love it. Like I love my puns, but I'm not that attached to them because it's like, yeah, okay, they're puns. Like, you know, how seriously are you going to take them? Uh, you know, or I'll do GIF reactions to things, but it's like, well, it's not my GIF, so <laughs> I didn't create the thing. So yeah, it's definitely, and it's definitely that hurdle. Like I love that perspective of, um, yeah, just creating for yourself, and I so admire, you know, the people who you know, are able to put themselves out there. Like, you know, you're just like, you know, it's like slap, ripping your heart out, slapping it down on the table for, you know, a few minutes just to see what happens to it. Uh, yes. Yeah, yes. it's, yeah, no, this is, yeah, thank you, everyone. Like, this is really cool to hear. I feel so seen. <laughs> yeah, no, I would just really quick, make a quick plug to Brene Brown. She talks about vulnerability and courage and, you should watch her Netflix special. I mean, um, I just watched it, um, but like, I think it's good for all of us who are, you know, T inferior and are afraid of the tribe criticism. Um, you know, the one of the most brave and most courageous things we can do is is to um, honestly expose ourselves and be um, and and be vulnerable. Um, so I, I'm trying to um, take what what she her research on on shame and vulnerability and, and courage and i'm trying to apply it in a in a more positive way so i i feel more confident posting those tweets or expressing my ideas to to people who i don't really know yeah thank you everyone for being so vulnerable with like expressing your ip struggles with what the group thinks <laughs> and like i i really enjoyed listening to it we have two more questions before we end the panel and so my second last question for you guys is what is your relationship with nostalgia? Oh, <laughs> extreme, <laughs> extreme. Um, I love what uh, Paul said about uh, what was it? Painful nostalgia. 
because that is, yeah, I can hit myself in the head with bad memories, like, all the time. Um, but also, I love, love nostalgia, and especially if it's good. It's something I can just live on for a really long time. Yeah, I have a very intense relationship with nostalgia. Um, I think that um, especially, um, well, for, for both good and bad situations. So if my SI is concretizing um, a bad nostalgic situation, it can obviously bring up a lot of very intense negative feelings. But but um, but my SI, you know, if it concretizes uh, an experience that was good, then I want to return to it. So for example, um, the beach and the library are two of my favorite places to be probably because of the SI associations of good FI feelings with those places. They make me feel safe. They make me feel comfortable. Um, and so, um, so there's a, um, and, and I will often find myself um, randomly going back to old conversations that I have with friends. I'll go on iMessage or Telegram or something, and I will go back a year or something and just read through um, conversations um, just to relive those those memories or those experiences. Um, same thing with photos or something like that. I, so I have a very intense connection with nostalgia, especially I, because I would probably consider myself more of a jumper on the OPS system. So there, I have a strong attachment to, to SI. Yeah, I'm I'm completely the same way, Christian. Yeah, like I have I often sometimes struggle with my any a bit because I'm very comfortable like just diving to that SI. And yeah, I, I know I've made references to painful nostalgia, but oh my god, like there is so much like joy in that. Like I save like I pr I've printed out emails from like my best friend from like That's 20 amazing. years ago. Oh, just, I love I that. I know, right? It's like I yeah, like that. yeah, like the hell with trees, right? Um, but yeah, just because I like I just like love that. And I like keep him in a notebook and I, yes. it's weird. It's like, like, you know, I still see him. It's not like he's my lost love or anything, but it's just, oh, just like read this. It's like, and we'll make, and he's actually pretty good. Cause he like gets all the obscure movie quotes and stuff from the movies we've rewatched over and over, like not even famous movie lines. It's like, remember this ancillary character had their one scene and they just said <laughs> something about grading something. term papers, uh, which That's was, cool. was nothing, but uh and and i even enjoy like a lot of the pain of it like just a good wallow and not so much the personal stuff but i remember i think a while back like kind of in the middle of summer with quarantine uh, heidi Preeb uh tweeted like how's everyone's si doing <laughs> <laughs> and i i wrote back to her as a well i'm compiling a list of uh ch scenes from childhood movies and tv shows that traumatized me <laughs> so i've got that going on you know, yes. but I loved it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm, yes. I. There's nothing more than I love than a than a good message from a friend or something, and then just printing that out and enshrining it so you can refer back yeah. to it. I yeah, mm -hmm. I relate so much to that. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, you mentioned a really a great um, great differentiator. So, extra rooted intuition, NE, a sign that someone uses NE to me is when they reference an obscure thing that no one knows about. So Paul, you mentioned like you, you remember things that an ancillary character that no one knows about or really pays attention to like their exact yeah. quote and you'll like bring it up and people are like, where is that from? <laughs> like with yeah. Bruce. My whole childhood. My whole yeah. childhood. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 When, when I talk to Paul, like he always brings up these references from random places. It's all about the any making connections everywhere. And then it'll bring it up like, and I'll be like, hey, here. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. So, okay, I noticed a trend with some of the INFPs I know. They refer to the earth as like this blue and green marble. <laughs> Something you did, um, like you sent me a tweet and you're like, thank you for being on this blue and green marble. I'm like, I had an INFP tell me this before too. It's like this detachment from this thing called earth that you start to call it a blue and green marble. <laughs> I don't know if that's a thing, maybe, the detachment from reality could be a differentiator or not. Well, I think it was my SI again, because I used to play marbles as a kid. So mm. yeah. SI any connection. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. All right. That's I amazing. suppose your connection to nostalgia, if any. I don't well, one, I rarely think about the past. 
um, somebody usually has to bring it up for me and I'll be like, oh yeah, I, I do kind of remember that. I rarely think about the past unless somebody brings it up um, or if I come across something in the closet and I'll pull it out and I'll be like, oh, I remember that. And I'll, I'll sit with it for like a couple minutes and I'll be like, oh, that was great. And then I'll put it back in the closet, you know? So it's like, I don't ever just sit and ruminate over the past. Um, like I don't go back and read old emails or anything. I, I, I do like photo books, but, um, and I love scrapbooking, but when I started scrapbooking was when my daughter was born. And the reason I wanted to start doing it was for her future. I was thinking oh, I should do this because it's creative and I can do my creativity, but I was thinking about how she's going to like it in the future and can look at it and appreciate it more than, I mean, they just sit in the closet and I don't look at them, you know, but, um, so I know like SI is like, Oh, if you scrapbook, you're an SI user, you know, and I'm like, no, you know, but, um, yeah, I don't, I just don't go to the past hardly ever. But, but when it brings me there, then I do I, my FI. I'm like, you know, sit about for a few minutes and enjoy it. I think I'm kind of similar. Um, I had a thought earlier about maybe like S, the way SE relates to the past or to like nostalgia is through like styles. So I was thinking, um, I don't know who here has watched Stranger Things on Netflix, but it's set in the 80s. And I remember like really enjoying that whole style of that. And that like made me feel very nostalgic. Um, that was like a, a strong feeling, I guess. But outside of things like that, I don't really like, I don't ever like long to return to the past or I, I think a lot of things will spark memories of the past for me, but generally speaking the past is like not interesting to me it's almost like i already garnered everything that i could from from the past and i uh, i noticed i also don't like saving things from the past either even photographs that i have um like if i have photographs with people who have left my life like i just they're not we grew apart nothing not something negative even but i just haven't seen them in 10 years and i don't imagine i ever will like i the picture of me with them has no meaning to me anymore. So I'll get rid of things like that. And I just, because <laughs> it feels weird to me to like hold on to it. It's like, there's no meaning. Yeah, anymore. I'm very good at getting rid of stuff too. Like clutter gone, stuff's gone, everything's gone. I saved a few things like of my daughter's, like her first pair of shoes and something like, I'm like, but I'm thinking about her, not, you know, me. Cause it's like, you know, I have a friend who I think is a big SI user and she's like, she'll, when she wants to go empty out her closet, she'll pick up a, an outfit and be like, oh, I remember when I wore this, I, I did this. Oh, I can't get rid of it. And then back in the closet, it goes. <laughs> you haven't worn that for like two years. You don't even fit in it. You're never going to lose the weight. You know, I'm like, get rid of the crap. And she's just, like, no, I love it. You know, and so that, that like, yeah, I, I don't feel that connection with past and things. I don't know. <laughs> it's weird. I just really quick jump in. Um, I was a history major in college, so that is like the epitome of, of SI <laughs> and being in the past. So that is how much I I love SI. Um, really quick, too. Uh, Sheila said something that made me think. I feel like a quick difference... ISFPs seem so much more direct than INFPs and just like yeah. saying things <laughs> like you just said, like, you're never going to lose the weight. Like, <laughs> just, what did I, and my, which is, I, I, I love how refreshingly honest ISFPs are. My ISFP friend is exactly the same way. He'll just say things. And I'm just like, I don't. <laughs> I wanted to um, add something real quick about nostalgia that it's, um, there's actually, it, it can be so positive where it's like, I can hold on to such good moments that um, things just don't change in my mind. So like my love for people does not change. Um, but then there's also the flip side of 
I will relive moments like they're still happening. So it can keep me in traumatic feelings for longer than I really need to experience. Um, so it's, it's definitely a good thing, bad thing situation, but, um, SI is important to me very much. So, and, uh, I've even experienced lately revisiting some SI places that, uh, I've let go of painful memories and remembered the positive ones. And I feel so much more relaxed and healthy in my life. Yeah. Okay. So that last thing you said about choosing what memories to hold on to and let go of, that doesn't make sense to me because as soon as I jump out of a moment, that's it. And I have no control over that. So that's really interesting. Um, I am not nostalgic at all. And I was actually going to say something very similar to what Sheila was saying. Like, I don't really, I'm not inclined to really think about the past necessarily, unless there's something in the present and tangible that will take me there. So like, you know, if I'm cleaning out my room or something and I find something, like she said, like, oh, I remember when. And then, yeah, but I don't really feel this like pull i feel like that y'all feel maybe um and then also i thought it was interesting what kurt said about style too like i am fascinated with with style whether it's like 90s or 80s or 70s or 20s or early 2000s or whatever like conceptually i think that that's really cool as well um and then oh but i was gonna say i think I mean, Sheila, you didn't say that you related to this, even though you're a four, but I know that fours tend to like think about their childhood a lot. And that is something that I relate to, but it isn't necessarily like details of my childhood. It's just like, oh, this is what screwed me up. And that's kind of like in the back of my mind often, but there, I couldn't really tell you really like any specific day in my childhood that was a great day <laughs> like it's just like a vague like abyss of adolescence um, yeah yeah uh, as a four uh, and as an si user i have vivid <laughs> details of specific moments mm -hmm. of joy and and pain um mm -hmm. with um especially traumatic experiences so yeah that's that's interesting mm -hmm. yeah like i there are like a couple moments in my mind here and there but like i said it's it's like fuzzy yeah, yeah. also it gets confusing too i don't know if kurt and sheila y'all relate to this but it gets confusing too if you've seen pictures a lot because it's like then that gets confusing like wait was this a picture that i saw and i'm like creating this memory <laughs> or like this is the actual memory because it's all just hazy to me i just know i was wearing a yellow shirt with those blue shorts with the flowers on it but i don't remember if that was a real you know <laughs> yeah i dream a ton and sometimes i'm like did i dream that or was that a real <laughs> thing and i, I can't be like did that really happen or was it Memorex? I mean, I, like, I just, I'm like, yeah, my dreams, because they're so vivid and real, I I can't differentiate sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> my dreams, <laughs> sorry, my dreams are so crazy, so <laughs> I can never, like, think they were real. <laughs> my dreams are so weird. <laughs> but anyway, I was just going <laughs> to. I was going to say, like, I actually think I have a really good memory. Like, for the most part, I could, I think I can remember a lot of things and details that, like, uh, even my sister doesn't recall. I'm always, like, having to remind her. And then, like, so I just found that interesting because it's, like, I don't necessarily, I definitely don't relate to the past the way SI users do. But um, something I said earlier, how it's, like, something will spark a memory. Like I'll, if I go to a restaurant and I see someone eating a steak, like that will spark a memory of the last time that I ate a steak. And then I can almost like recreate that event. I'll be like, okay, well, yeah, who was sitting next to me? Oh yeah, they were there. And then I was with these people as well. And then I remember like little SE details, like the moose head on the wall or like stuff like that. I don't know what, what that's all about, but. Well 
I, I think it goes back to what I mentioned earlier. I think with INFPs, there's an intentionality in bringing the past into the present, like we are looking for it um, many times. Um, whereas I think um, with ISFPs more, there has to be some sort of stimulus to trigger the memory, but you're not like actually seeking it to reenact or relive those experiences. Um, so, and also I think there's a difference between memory and nostalgia. Um, I think memory is just like, you know, recalling certain details of a past experience. But nostalgia, I think, brings more like the feeling, you know, the sen the sentimentality into the, the, the memory. Um, and, and nostalgia has a little bit more um, uh, active or intentional quality to it, at least to me. That's really well broken down, Christian. And so my last question for tonight is, what are some famous ISFPs and INFPs that you guys all know about? You can just popcorn style and we can all learn from each other. Um, well, I mentioned some earlier. So um, Janelle Monet, Lady Gaga, David Bowie, who else, who else? Did we dare say Taylor Swift? Yes, Taylor Swift. <laughs> they say Keanu Reeves, uh, I saw a video with Andrew Garfield and they had a little clip of him and I think he, he seemed like an INFP. He, he is, yeah. So I, I did the INFP versus INFJ video with Paul mm. and Susan Storm. And Susan Storm, after the panel, she's like, you know, Paul, you remind me of Andrew Garfield. <laughs> so yeah, I think Andrew Garfield is an INFP. And funny, That's arguably great. the most famous INFP, Peter Parker. Mm, yes. I so, like him as an maybe, well, At least the Tobey Maguire. I, no, Tobey Maguire. He, Tobey Maguire is more famous. And he cries like, <laughs> oh, that kind, yeah. that one. That's the <laughs> you know? I, yeah. yeah. But that was yeah. a big compliment that Susan gave me. Uh, and yeah. she said, do you know who that is? And I said, uh, I was like, yes, you wrote about him in one of your articles. And I got the, you know, flash that I read her stuff. But yeah, that was a pretty cool compliment. He's like, he just seems super cool. Like he, oh, yeah. like he doesn't even know it, but doesn't care. And that's what makes him so cool. He's a phenomenal I'm actor right. too. Phenomenal yeah. actor. Social Network. If any of you yeah, guys have ever, haven't really... seen it, I would highly recommend going and watching that movie. Yeah. yeah. No, he's great in that. They say Burnham um, is an INFP. Who? Bo Burnham. Who? Yeah. I agree, actually. Watch oh, the stuff oh, I do okay. agree. Yeah. Uh, I, I think a good example of an ISFP comedian might be the slightly drier equivalent of Bo Burnham, which would be Dimitri Martin. I didn't even know him. Ooh, yep. You know, homie, he sits yep. out with the guitar and Ooh. does a bunch of one-liners. Yep. He's brilliant. He's brilliant. But something about the the SE, like, he's kinetic, but he's smooth. And the NI, like, he'll just, he'll get one point. Boom. It's not a, it's not a whole bunch of, like, randomness you'll say a really good line and it cracks you up you're like wow that speaks to a truth of the universe and then i'll just play a bit more and then do another one and again and again it's sort of like sort of like what all the isfps have been doing they're sort of silent for a bit and then boom and i truth you're like where did that come from you know yeah that's some ISTP, ISFP style. Like I noticed the ISPs especially, like they're like, boom, one liner. You're like, whoa. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, that is the one thing that I am constantly surprised by with ISFPs um, and my friend, like, you know, just out of nowhere, they'll just, he'll just drop this like truth bomb, just like, yeah. you know, just very direct. And I was like, whoa, mm -hmm. like, where did that come? Where did that like super deep insight come from? <laughs> it's incredible. The INFPs are the verbose ones. The ISFPs are the insightful ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it kind of reminds me. I hear uh, Bill Watterson, uh, the creator of Calvin and Hobbes, is an INFP. Mm -hmm. And there's some argument as to whether Calvin is an INFP. I don't personally think so. I, I could see him as an ENFP. Mm -hmm. uh, but Hobbes is probably an ISFP. Mm. Yeah, he's got that very laid back, and he tends to he tends to make yeah very like like sort of snarky or comments about whatever <laughs> ridiculous thing Calvin's doing. <laughs> but at the same time, like he's very he's very chill. He's very gentle about it. He's not like you know, mm. oh you're wrong. It's just like right. oh, this isn't going to work. Yeah. Who who's the creator of the Family Guy? Oh, Seth, Seth MacFarlane. MacFarlane. Oh, Seth MacFarlane. Yeah, they say he's an IFP. 
Yeah, and um, I, I've sure. Kiersey argued that Steven Spielberg was ISFP. Yep. I've I've also seen very good Brad example Pitt. because it's a very it's a very uh, a clean visual. Mm. Brad Pitt is a sex symbol no matter what his time. <laughs> he's a sex symbol. He's probably ISFP. Yeah, Ryan Gosling. Yep, Michael ISFP. Jackson. Yeah. Why is it all the gorgeous people are ISFPs and all the weird ones are INFP? <laughs> ISFPs are just cooler Justin than us, you guys. They it's, are. They're, they're, the, they're the cooler alternate universe version of us. <laughs> it goes back to everything we've been talking about, how, like, yeah, you tend to, like, you know, speak in, like, very controlled, like, little bursts. Yeah. You know, you, you like, you know, sit back and then you act. You know, like, there's this confidence Gosh. to everything you do. Like, just the way you, like, engage with the environment. You know, whereas like we're too busy like babbling and you know doubling back on whatever the hell we said half yeah. the time. So, so there's also Fiona Apple. She's an INFP. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's yeah. Who else? I mean, there's. I, I mean, I oh. can think of INFPs. Um, uh, um, um, Heath Ledger, uh, William Pattinson. Shakespeare, mm -hmm. Robert Pattinson. Just Robert Pattinson. Yeah, is an INFP. Um, I've said this before in the INFP video that was in Soren Kierkegaard, um, uh, Albert Camus, um, oh, Jean-Jacques Rousseau. Yeah, I, it's it's interesting, like the the typings that I've seen, like INFP, and I guess it kind of maybe highlights a little bit of a difference. INFPs seem like famous INFPs, I guess, if we're um, comparing, seem to fall more into like philosopher writer category. And then a lot of the yeah. I, famous ISFPs Tend to fall more into like um, acting or singing or some sort of performance yeah. art. Not not that uh, of course both types can be both things, you know. But but there seems to be more um, in in um, in those specific areas. Yeah. ISFPs are just some of the most like brilliantly, uniquely creative people. Um, yeah. Just I mean, if you look at um, you know going back to David Bowie and and Lady Gaga and just those. Mm -hmm. I mean, just the, the characters that they create. I mean, I could never come up with anything remotely close to that, of, of just that vision. Um, that NI vision is extremely powerful. Mm -hmm. I actually think that Janelle Monae is INFP. Really? Yeah, okay. I do. I, she, yeah, I feel like she has NE. But, I mean, also for ISFP, there's... Prince, there's Rihanna. Oh, yep. yes, yeah, Rihanna again. Wait, wait, who's yeah. Prince? Do you mean, you mean the artist formerly known as Prince? Yeah, because the artist God. Prince does not exist officially. <laughs> right. No, that's there a was... good example. That's a very good example. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah so those are the people I thought of. Bob Marley. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yep. Yeah. I think yeah. Elizabeth I Taylor think was an ISFP. Who? Elizabeth oh. Taylor. Mm. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Definitely yeah. see that. I've heard a lot of people type MF, the artist, as an ISF. Yeah, I can see that actually. I'm not sure. So, Who? Yeah. Who? NF. Uh, N N oh, NF yeah. Is a, a rapper. The rapper, oh. not, the, not the temperament type. Yeah, I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, that's a really good example of an ISFP. Yeah. It is. It's got the spiritual NI. Uh, you know his 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 I guess his Christian faith and his and uh, just that also that determination uh, that that focus, but it's very like it's very kinetic in an se way, the way and the way he plays with words it's very it's not so much stretching words like any would but it's like playing with the sounds of the words like se would. Paul McCartney, Paul McCartney is that how you say it? Yeah, he yeah. ISFP. Yes. But yeah, but I think Ed Sheeran is ISFP. Yeah. Yeah. And Nas, the rapper. Oh. oh the true. What about Kendrick? The beginning. Oh, he's yeah. INFP. Yeah, Kendrick INFP. Okay. Woo. Audrey, Audrey Hepburn, because I think FI for her. Oh, I think Marilyn Monroe might have been too. An ISFP? Yeah. <clears throat> like if you look at an mm -hmm. ISFP, I think she's probably ESFP. I, you know, but Joyce, she was do you so... regret initiating popcorn style? Yeah. <laughs> you just like, this one, maybe not. This one, maybe not. This one. Yeah, how many have we had no, so far? I, I want <laughs> you guys to debate it because I want like pure ISFPs and pure INFPs. I, oh, I think, no, I, I think I could see 
Marilyn Monroe being um, icy because I just, I remember reading that she yeah. was just extremely actually very shy and she just did yeah. not actually like all the attention. It's serendipitous because uh, Sheila dressed up as Marilyn Monroe for my ISFP video yeah. with her because she thought that Marilyn uh -huh. Monroe was an ISFP too. I think she was. so cool. That's she cool. Really okay. Chadwick Boseman was probably ISFP too. Yeah. Actor? Oh my. Okay. Can mm -hmm. I do a little aside? Because not related, but I read that. Um, so the, the other day, um, there was a, a news report. Um, Sienna Miller had spoken out and said that during um, 21. Um, 21 Bridges. Yeah, yes. Um, that Sienna Miller was, unfortunately, she was not getting the pay that she was trying to negotiate with the studio. So Chadwick Bo Boseman took a, cut, a pay cut from his own salary so that way she could get an increase in pay. Like, I that too. I mean, we're the best. <laughs> why did he have to leave? <laughs> I know. He was such a great person, it seemed like. Yeah. And, and, just and we're like, the uh, idealists. Wow. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, they just yeah. think about it. They do it. I, I, I feel like yeah. if I had cancer, I'd probably be like crying and wallowing in it. But like, I don't know. There's a with ISFPs, you guys seem to just be so much more like resilient. Like with just Chadwick, I mean, you're just so brave and just was like, you know what? No, like I'm not gonna. And maybe it's not having the SI to like pull you into like yourself but like just but just kind yeah. of trying it's to make some sort of change in that way like i know i feel like si has a different relationship there's sensations in your body and everything mm -hmm. and so i feel like that could have played a part as well he's just like yeah yeah, yeah. it's another and like, feeling it's just mm -hmm. insane i had nobody had any he had it so well he was so strong and it's just like yeah. he's like let just, me take taekwondo uh, <laughs> So amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if anyone mentioned Bjork. I think she might oh. be ISF. Oh, yeah. yeah. Totally. The dress Bjork and everything. Thing. The dressing. <laughs> God. Yeah. So, I think Enya is an ISFP. Who? Enya. Enya? Um, yeah. 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 Definitely. Does anyone have thoughts on Billie Eilish's type? Ooh. We're so confused. ISFP. I don't know. Right? I think she's definitely a perceiver. Yes. And I think she's probably an introvert. Yeah. I mean, ISFP. I, mean, I, I, I was I, I was thinking INFP for her because I've seen interviews and she has a, a sense of monomania that I only see with INFPs. Like, I, <laughs> what's that? What's like? monomania? I, I, it, okay, I'm totally misusing the word, but the, what I mean from monomania is like she gets really hyper focused on the things she likes, and she's like really like the obsessed. office. Yes, exactly yeah. like that. She's obsessed so, like, with the show The Office. She watches yeah, she's every episode. She's obsessed with it. Oh. To the point where, like, she's almost fandom. She like is in fandom based things. Okay. Well, I, I want to. Oh, oh, the other thing <laughs> I, I wanted to say really quick. Um, Christina Perry, I think, is one hundred percent ISFP. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. I want. I, I want to. I know we're getting a little off topic, but Erica like sparked in anything for me. Okay. So. Do ISFPs have a thing about fandom? Because like, I know for INFPs, like we get very into like, just the world of like shows or books or characters. Superheroes. Like, yeah, like, like I'm Lord of the Rings fandom. Like I will, yes. We won't shut up. Yeah, like, like we'll think that like we know them. <laughs> yeah. I'm like that with anything Joss Whedon. Oh, yes, Firefly. Dude. I love Joss Whedon. Right? Yeah, he's a. I mean, he's a dick, but he makes great stuff. <laughs> there you go. I'm not. I'm not sure. I understand what you mean. I mean, I like. I can really appreciate things like that. Like, I love the fantasy genre, and I'm like a big Office fan. I've probably watched it through like five times. Okay. But like, I don't. I'm not entirely sure what. So, what I mean by fandom is like you're like have like an obsession with um like maybe. Um, let's say Lord of the Rings, right? So like you have not only just like the books, like the main books, but then you also have like anything Lord of the Rings related, like it could be figurines, it could be posters. Um, you go to 
uh, uh, you know, conventions and dress up as Lord of the Rings characters. Like you go to Lord of the Rings in concert and watch like, and then you engage with the fan community. Like you go online, go to forums, like Lord of the Rings forums. And you just like, that's what I mean by fandom. Yeah. Yeah, I don't do I'm that. just kidding. I'm the worst. I think I, that seems to be an INFP thing. Joyce, can you assess why that would be an INFP thing and not an ISFP thing? The only thing I could think of is like, I loved Prince, like, so much and I put posters on my wall of Prince and all his music. So I was a fan of Prince, but that's the extent of it. Like, mm. you know, go to his concerts and, and, and want to just like focus and, and dig more on everything that he did, but not like a obsession. <laughs> well, it, it was an obsession when I was little, like young, yeah. but like not like uh, like not like a genre. Like I know like what you're a, trying to say. Like a, like a community. Like a almost right. Like, it's like uh, you're in the world of something. Yeah. No. It's more like I wanted to marry him. Like <laughs> maybe know, that's that maybe that's an S I S E difference. I don't know. What do you think, Joyce? Yeah. I I also think I it's an S I S E difference. Cause um S I. Like when it wants to categorize something, it really wants to categorize something like really, really, really precisely and in depth and in every way. And so it'll like go into monomania and like what you guys are saying. It's a very INFP thing. I know a lot of INFPs who are into into like a very specific niche and they go all the way and they're all crazy on it. And it's very specific to that type. And I think it's like an, maybe it's like an NP thing too. Like when mm. you guys get fixated on learning something, you guys like really want to learn it and you learn yes. everything about that thing. Yes. It's like the NE hunger for just all of that knowledge and the SI is like, yeah, I'm going to store it all, store it all. Yeah. <laughs> That's so true. I, I think the, the parallel for NI is like you're that way with concepts and ideas like modeling. Mm. Maybe it's an introverted perceiving like thing. Mm. Yeah, could you expand on that, Kurt? Um, yeah, like just the way you were just describing SI um, as like when it when it wants to categorize something, it really wants to. I was thinking of how with NI, it's like the the thought of a concept, like you want to kind of know everything around that one thing. I'm kind of like we were talking about earlier. It's like hyper focused on. Um, like one theme, um, yeah. like I can I can sit in a theme for like a long time. Like uh, me too. Like how we were talking earlier about uh, Brene Brown and like the concept of you know like I've been living in that for a while. Like this idea of like showing up a hundred percent of myself to mm. like every situation and every choice. Um, like that theme, I'm like marinating in it and like. I guess in that way, I, I kind of see a parallel there where it's like, oh. for NI, it's like that one, uh, it, con the concepts maybe are like monomaniacal. Monomaniacal. That is amazing, Kurt. That, that yes. distinction is fantastic. So another differentiation between INFP and ISFP is like, where is their monomania? With INFPs, mm. their monomania is very on like literal concrete, like an actual physical, like well, like something like that. That's actually something like um, it's like right. a, it's like a it exists in the real world. It like, exists, so. yeah. Like when okay. INFPs are obsessed with something and in their monomania around it, it's it's something that exists. With ISFPs, it might be like a a, a vaguer type of thing, like a, a concept that is like right. a, a concept that you're thinking about that you're monomaniaing to like find. Like, wa like wanting to marry Prince, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I, I'm just teasing. I, Kurt, that was so, that was such a great like explanation because now I understand NI better because of that and, and the difference between NI and SI because like, I'm thinking like, you know, you're talking about Brene Brown, like I have to keep reminding myself, especially because I haven't, my essay hasn't concretized it yet, but like, like about, the, but I don't know, I don't know if I would even fixate on just the concept itself. Um, and that's so fascinating that I would not obsess over that in the same way that I would like my love for Lord of the Rings or, or whatever. That's, that's so, um, and I'm interested in theories, but like, and concepts, but like more multiple ones. And I'm not wedded like, completely 
and I'm not devotional to one specific one. So that's like, and that's would, so awesome. I would say the way I relate is um, I will have conceptualized things floating around in my brain um, and they won't make sense sometimes to me until they're conceptualized externally. And then I'm suddenly like, whoa, got it. There we go. So I don't, yeah. Yeah, and I th it seems like NI is more like about the amorphous with the concept where like SI is like, you know, it's very much in like the little little details. It's like, I liked how um, um, Michael Pierce described SI as like a 3D model and you're like turning it around and looking at every single little detail. Um, so like, it seems like they're both focused on one thing, but like um, NI is more focused on like a, amorphous intangible thing whereas like SI is looking at specific like zero really zeroing on specific detailed concretized things 10,000% yeah. Christian I love seeing like parallels because I feel like it helps helps you understand both of the functions better yeah like the negation of like what it isn't like yeah that's helpful yeah yeah paralleling is amazing and so thank you everyone for coming out uh, thank you for sharing your IP struggles and, you know, the difficulty with putting yourself out to the tribe. Um, that was like really moving to hear. I was like really blessed to hear a part of your vulnerability from from all of you. And so thank you for showing me that. Thank you for, you know, being authentic creators of the world, giving the world your your artistic creations, you know, Jamila through your singing, mm -hmm. Sheila through your art and like Thank you, you know, also like, thank you INFPs for all of the random funny ideas that you interjected throughout this panel. <laughs> like mm -hmm. you kept it like really comedic and fun and you made all these interesting and desperate connections that, you know, really refresh my mind. Cause I, I'm like, wow, that's so cool. Like all the tangents all everywhere. It's so great. <laughs> Tangent land. It's, it's, it's great. I, I love it. It's um like a, vacation into different ideas and you, you, you guys are really taking me there. So thank you, INFPs. Like, thank you for sharing your fandoms. You know, Christian really likes Lord of the Rings and Paul really <laughs> likes superheroes. And, like, that's awesome. You, you, you guys are, are great. <laughs> and yeah. Um, and other Paul, it was nice to hear that you were a comedian. Like, <laughs> yeah, Paul. you are very funny, like punny, you know? <laughs> yeah. You always get a way, you find a way to make me laugh and make other people laugh. And that's amazing too. And Erica, thank you for like your your insights into Billie Eilish and like just starting the whole chat on on fandoms and going like, whoa, like that monomania was such a pivotal point. So thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. And Kurt, I really like your ability to parallel different thoughts together and you arrive at this NI essence of what that idea really is. Like you find the source of like what it actually is like conceptually and you hit the nail on the head and it's amazing. I am so, so, so fascinated by your ability to do that, Kurt. And so, yeah, thank you FI Doms for coming out and just showing the world what it, how amazing it is to be in your mind for a while. You know, I, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> you all really transported me into like this amazing FI world for two and a half hours. And I feel, I feel infinitely more enlightened from it. So thank you. <laughs> and thank and you. I, yeah. I said thank you. You, you all, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you all add an FI flavor or an FI signature to my life and I'm better for it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. We, we can only engage in these really insightful conversations with each other to ex expand our knowledge of what it means to be our and the other type because mm -hmm. we have such a beautiful NI, FE type of mind going on there mm -hmm. that brings it all together. Like this, these, <clears throat> this macro community made up a bunch of these micro communities in each video it's just bringing more and more people together to understand the world through this lens so it's strange being thanked for helping on a project that undoubtedly helped us so thank you joyce mm -hmm. agreed oh thank you okay.
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and thank you everyone for watching. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye everyone. Okay. Bye everyone. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>